Cool. We will watch this after 100%. Okay, cool. All right. All right. I'm going to call everybody here and then uh, we'll we'll see if we can get this shit going. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. We'll see who picks up today. We'll see. We'll see if any single person picks up. Yo. Yo. Dude, good morning, man. Hey, yo, people are actually picking up. Let's go. Yo, that's crazy. Big, dude. Dude, I just watched uh, Wuthering Waves endgame gameplay. Yeah, I saw you, man. You say you're gonna you're gonna do it for your play and gonna help other people create a, create accounts. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do it to help them. I'm gonna do it that way I can make them feel worse about themselves. Right? That's that's the big difference, uh, right? Because if I go on really... somebody's, you know, but think about it. If I go on someone's account and I beat a fight that they can't beat, that immediately is going to make them feel like the world's smallest person, and I cannot wait for that shit, dude. It's because like because like here's the thing, okay? A account roast in Genshin Impact and Honkai Star, they don't really matter, right? They don't. But what really matters is when you go on somebody's account and you can do something that they can't do. Right. Oh my God. I had this video where I went on um, some 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 person's account who was like like screaming that Genshin Impact was too hard. Like the Spiral Abyss was unbeatable. The most they could ever beat was like Floor Nine. And then I go on their account and I and I thirty six star. Right. I don't know how this person was managing to fuck it up this hard, but this was like way back in the day, like when the game first came out. Uh, but it was it was funny as fuck. And they said, "Oh well, you can't do anything. You're a fucking whale." And I'm like, "Okay, man. Well then, let me just go on your account and beat it for you, bro." Uh, it was dope. And then ever since then, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and retire now because I'm never going to have a career peak that's ever going to beat that. It was dope. Uh, anyways, that was my day. How's your stream going, Mr. Pokey? Yeah, it's great, man. Dude, I, I still have the lagging issue, man. Uh, like the 45 second delay issue? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I refresh it one time, then, then it's good. Okay, then good. There you go. Uh, yeah, uh, what PC are you using? Um, custom built. From where? <laughs> From Singapore. <laughs> well, I thought you were gonna get Starforge, man. Yo, there was no. Wait, what happened? As in, like, um, my community told me that um, pre-built PC tend to be less value than. Oh custom -built, my so, god, yeah. those people are so fucking stupid. It's like. Okay, yeah, you're right. A pre-built PC costs more than a custom. I wonder why? Because you pay someone to build it. Like, okay, I guess technically you can do everything. I guess you can change your own fucking oil. Hey, did you know changing your oil costs less if you do it yourself? Yeah, no shit. Holy fuck, I hate the dude. Computer dorks are so fucking annoying, bro. Holy shit. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy, man. It was. Yeah. Crazy. Also, Sir, bro, good morning, good morning everyone. 100, man. I need to morning. fucking get on your level, bro. Holy shit. I need to wake up. Oh, Woo! dude. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Woo! Let me tell you, dude. God damn it, bro. <laughs> no, dude. Waking up early is the best decision you'll ever make. It's so goddamn uh, good. I wake up every morning at 6 a.m. And then I already have my... I, I haven't even taken a sip of my coffee yet. Or my gamer subs, which you can use code ITK every 10% off. Uh, bro, that's when I go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> I know, man, I know. Dude, you want me to tell you why I wake up early every day, Fob? Why? Because the NAEU viewership is just so goddamn insane, I have to go live at this time. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> the double dip is fucking nuts. It's actually insane, holy fuck. Plus, EU viewers are so nice. They're just like, well, nobody streams this hour, so we're just happy that someone's live for us <laughs> to watch. Fuck, they're so nice. Also, yo, Smack, can I, get, can I get a mic check from specifically you real quick? Yeah, what's up, bro? Okay, I'm gonna pump you up. There we go. That should be good. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm assuming everybody's here has played Wuthering Waves. Yes, sir. I'm playing right now. Good. I'm playing playing right right now. All right. Yo, Smack. Wait. You hmm? sound fucking dead, bro. <laughs> Nigga, I'm wet trying to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, bro. Yeah. I was up the last night streaming till like, uh, I don't know, 2.30 a.m. And then I, I watched a couple of episodes of something. Then I fell asleep at probably like 3.30 a.m. Then I'm up. Wait, what do you mean you watched a couple episodes of something? I don't even remember what the anime was. I just put that shit on and fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Oh fuck! Well, I, I didn't even I didn't even sleep. Yeah, I'm not. The Jesus, guy. I hate going to sleep Jesus in the dark. Christ! I hate going to sleep in the dark, bro. Like I I, I despise that shit. I gotta like have something on. Okay, oh, all right, yeah. No, no, I'm just like that too. I like it because I don't know. Sunshine makes me happy. It's good, yeah. man. 
Uh, <laughs> also, if you want a good show to watch, watch Love on the Spectrum. I've been watching the fuck out of that. I don't even know what that is. Love it's like it's like we're autistic people fall in love with each other. Oh damn! Well, I've seen that. Yeah, dude, it's like the most wholesome shit you'll ever see. When like two autistic people are like forced to interact, it is so fucking good. Yeah. And they have I no filter either. An it's like, tell, <laughs> tell me about yourself. Uh, I like boobies and... No, they're, they're so wholesome. But there's no filter. It's hilarious. Yeah, and then, like, some, there's this one chick who's, like... She's, like, a better-looking, like... I, I would I don't, I don't know, like, a lower-functioning, like, autistic person. And she'll, like, meet people and be like, Oh, God, you're ugly and stupid. Leave me alone. Like, for their first date, it's insane. Like, they're Damn. so blunt. It's so funny. All right. Uh, oh, everybody should be. Oh, no, I, I fucking agree, to be honest. <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, I know it's really early for y'all, so I'm going to go ahead and get this shit started. Because, uh, oh, by the way, I, I know some of y'all are busy today. If you ever need to leave at any point, you're more than welcome to. I just appreciate y'all being here. Uh, this is a very important episode to me. Uh, we're going to do this shit like we normally do. If you've never been on one of these things before, don't worry. It's very, very, very easy. Uh, and we're going to get into it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And here we go. Boys, today we're having a very special episode. Oh. Yo, Ragslant, thank you for the raid, brother. Appreciate you. Okay, yo. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right, let me go into that one more time. Uh, boys, today's a very special episode. Today, we have a group of elite content creators all talking about a new game called Wuthering Waves. Everybody here has played the game to varying degrees. I'll be real. Uh, I've probably played maybe six hours of it, but I've watched about 13 hours of footage on it on YouTube. Uh, the game is very good, but we're here to talk about a lot of hot topics. I am very unprepared for today's episode. I'm going to keep it 100% because I'm just excited to talk to so many new people. This is going to be a great podcast. Sit back, buckle up, and make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the video, and go follow everybody's channel that is here today, which will be linked in the pin comment and the description go check out their twitches go check out their youtube check out their twitters and i appreciate the hell out of y'all so let's see how long we can talk about this shit uh good morning everyone hello hey, yo all right i'm gonna go ahead and do introductions real quick uh we are joined here by eight people unfortunately wait add rex to the call is he available is he, he available to join? Can join but he should be able to join let me just uh wait regs pick up if you're free, you can join whenever. He can just join whenever, right? Just make sure. I think so. Yeah, you yeah, should, should be able, able to. to. Okay, or I'll do something clutch and I'll remove him from the group and then I'll re-add him to the group and that should call him immediately. Yeah, it does. Holy fuck, I'm so fucking smart. All right, cool. Let's fix this shit. All right. Here we go. So we are joined by eight or nine other content creators. There's going to be a lot of fucking voices today, but we're going to try to keep this shit clean. But first, I would like to introduce one of the sweetest content creators I have ever seen and watched for a very, very, very long time. Never got a bad vibe from them in my entire life. We are joined today by Sweetily. Hello, everyone. Okay, Thank say, you. Like, Thank you for inviting, for inviting <laughs> me to the podcast. Yeah, of course. Uh, how much have you played Wuthering Wave so far? Probably too much. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, I appreciate you being here, and I'm looking forward to your uh, perspective. Out, out of curiosity, how would you rate Wuthering Waves from 1 to 10 so far? Probably 7 or 8. Okay, I'm good. having a lot of fun so I'm, far. I'm really hoping that one of you guys just fucking hates this game. That's what I'm really... I really <laughs> want to find somebody who wants to shit on this fucking game. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Yo, next up, we have joined once Yo, again. Yo, hello. Rags, what up, baby? Sorry, Mike. I don't know how to set up my <laughs> video hey. camera for this. Hey, you're all good, man. <clears throat> We're going to do intros, and I'll cue you in, okay? Sure. Cool, cool, cool. And then, uh, if you don't mind, uh, you're getting a lot of feedback. Would you mind going on Push the Talk? Oh, sorry. Okay, sure. No, nah, it's all good. All right, we're going to wait a second. That way we don't get feedback. And then we'll be good to go. My boy Rexley got the boomer energy like me. Sorry, Rex, bro. I was a boomer with the Discord shit too, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah, Rex, are you are you are you on your phone? No, I'm actually on my PC. What? Really? It might have changed the mic settings or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay, let, let me let me take a look. Yeah, you got it, man. Have y'all had breakfast yet? No. Uh, I, I just breakfast. Ate. Good. Mm. You should get some. It's actually the most important meal of the day. Fun fact. Awesome Breakfast myth, gives me diarrhea. Okay, well, then you should probably get that checked out. <laughs> oh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
You, I, Hasn't gone to bed yet. Can't eat breakfast because it'll destroy his internal systems. Like, yeah. my guy, go to the fucking doctor. You're like, you're like, yeah. People say I might die with how little I sleep. It's like, yeah, you can't even eat breakfast. God damn it. <laughs> I know. I've been like that since I was like a kid. Every time I had br my mom gave me breakfast, I'd go to school and I just have diarrhea. I'm like, mom, stop giving me breakfast, mm. and then she stopped. <laughs> she what you... like what you were eating? <laughs> yeah, what are you eating for breakfast? She tried everything, bro. She tried like Korean style breakfast, American style breakfast, like everything. And I just like if I eat anything, any substance, like sustenance before like noon, just like upsets my stomach. I don't know what it is. Do you take probiotics? No. Take those. Oh, why? They'll help your stomach dramatically. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like I, okay. I take like <laughs> fucking six of them every day because I have I had horrible stomach issues too. Regardless, besides. All of that. We have Braxophone, another great guy who's been on here, one of the creepiest guys I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> he's, he's the best. Yo, Brax, what up, dog? What's good? Thanks for having me again, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. How, how much Wuthering Waves have you played so far? Oh, fuck. I think I've only played like 12 hours. I, I feel like okay. I'm, I'm falling behind everybody, but I just got to the hologram thing, yeah. and that's been fun as fuck. I can't wait to talk about that. No, I, I really don't think it matters whether you played for four hours or 12 hours. I think the only thing that matters is how much media you've consumed, right? Because, yeah. like, I, I, I'll, I'll be real, man. I am not trying to burn out before the actual game comes out, and I, I fucking hate playing on closed betas. Knowing that all my progress is going to be wiped, it's just, it's just a oh, god, it's so miserable to me. Dude. Yeah, it does, it does kind of suck. I agree. Yeah. It's, like, it, it's I tough. You're like, bro, I just want to... I just want to play this game for the first time, a second time, and I can't, I can't yeah, do that. Yeah, 100%. Rex, you, uh, you made it to the holograms in 12 hours. I'm actually ashamed of myself, bro. I think maybe maybe I played a little bit longer than that. I just I only had like three streams. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, damn, bro, what the fuck am I doing over here? <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, I don't know what the fucking holograms are. <laughs> right so i have no idea what the fuck you're talking about oh uh, uh yo next up we have fob master he joined us last episode he's here once again a gotcha gaming veteran been around the scene for many 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 years very good very base takes fabio what up dog hello how much I'm of I'm, waves how much have you played <clears throat> uh a lot i'm about to hit union 33 jesus is, fucking christ yeah. that's insane be sick bro 33 can you hear me now yeah yeah you sound perfect you actually sound perfect okay great <laughs> okay it took me a while to figure out yeah you're all good man don't worry about it uh but yeah okay. fob uh how are you liking it so far actually um actual like i'll just go off the one to ten scale yeah. uh probably seven and a half okay um I'm, i love the combat but there's just a lot of other stuff that I think I, I want to hear about yeah. everything that you don't like. That's what I want to hear about today when we get to that. Yeah, yeah we, we can we can talk about good. That today. Fuck yeah. Okay, yo, next up, we are joined again by Gotcha Smack, fucking one of the most outspoken men in the entire Gotcha community. Uh, it's always great to have you here, man. And uh, yeah, how have you been enjoying Weathering Wave so far from one to ten? Yeah, for me, um, I want to say it's been probably about a solid 8.5 out of 10 with the weaknesses making it 8.5 out of 10. If they fix the weaknesses, I think I'll be more closer to a, a, a 9, 9.5 out of 10. I've been really enjoying it, man. Okay. Hey, fuck yeah, man. I mean, yeah. All right. I'm excited to hear what you don't like about the game. Uh, yeah. Mr. Pokey. Yeah. Wait, what? You skipped M-Tash. No, I didn't, bro. Stop worrying about what it looks like on your screen. It's, it's, it's how it looks on my screen, man. I didn't skip anybody, man. Jesus. Are you gonna are you right, gonna sure. are you gonna be able to control yourself this episode or no? I'm controlling myself from yapping too much. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, all right, good. Today we're actually talking about a game that you've played before. Thank fucking God, man. <laughs> I have no idea why you were there last episode. You had no idea what the fuck was going on. That shit was mad funny, to be honest. How much? How much weathering games have you played? I know you got in late. Who got you a code? Um, I think they just gave me late, genuinely. Oh yeah. I, I yeah yeah. I feel like you're full of shit, bro, because they don't do that. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. But okay, all right. You know what? I'll move on. I'll move on. To not, you know, we don't have to worry about it. Anyways, we got Mr. Yeah. Pogue here, as always. One of the most quintessential content creators for all of Gotcha Gaming. A very good translator from other languages into English. Always appreciate that shit. That's my son. Please be kind to him. And I apologize about his behavior in advance. He doesn't know any better. He's just a kid. All right, next up, we have the dad of the Gotcha community. 
The man. Also, dude, I hate when... Oh, my God. I was watching your podcast the other day, uh, Smack, uh, with Vulcan, and you introduced MTash as the man, the myth, the legend, bro. When somebody introduces you as the man, the myth, the legend, that means they have nothing that they actually know about you, bro. That's my opinion. I hate that introduction so much. Uh, dude, I shit you not. I, I yeah. only use it when I'm trying to praise somebody. That's funny that you think that. No, no, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's, like, it's, like, it's like that is used for every single intro ever. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I hate that intro. Yeah. Regardless, it's, it rolls off the tug nice, but yeah. It ahead. does. We have the true free to play God, the man who has changed everything. The man who has put the weight of a community's issues on his back by himself and brought it together single-handedly. One of the greatest men in all of human history. Lover, fighter, the greatest sex machine in North wait, North America, which is still Canada. We have Michael M. Tashed, Tashed Man. Yeah. Finally, an intro worthy of my... <laughs> Worthy of my stature. Um, hey, yep. I have played quite a bit of Wuthering Waves, yep. but I don't want to play anymore. Good. I, I honestly, I'm very like progression and like reward focused, so I really like it. It's awesome. I hope they fix some stuff. I think it's like probably like a seven out of ten, seven point five out of ten. Really like the stuff, but I think they need to focus on a, a few things. But I just like. I don't know. I don't want to like grind to like level thirty-five and then be like, okay, I lose all my stuff. 100%. Even though I want to test things, I just like I I just want to jump in fresh when the game drops. Yeah, kudos to you, man. Because like I got to, I was like I don't I don't want to get to level fifteen and have to redo all this shit. <laughs> I just I yeah. can't do. No, no, yeah. You know what killed my gameplay experience? I I pulled that fucking stupid ass fucking flower thorn bitch, man. Like, oh my god, bro. I wanted to uninstall immediately, bro. I wanted Kakarot so bad, which apparently they changed his name to, like, Marcello or something. What's his name now? Calcharo, bro. Calcharo. Yeah. yeah, you think... Like the they, Sephiroth you, guy? Yeah, the Sephiroth guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, he looks so good. I wanted to play as a Jin Jin or, yeah, Sephiroth. Or, is Yin Lin in the game? Not yet, not uh, yet. Not yet. Is she gonna she's gonna be a premium character, like a premium banner character, yeah, surely? Yeah. She's probably she's probably right after Gion's banner. Okay. You can pull her in six days. Really? Yeah. On the CBT? Yeah. The banner will refresh in six days. Yeah. Oh okay. Oh, that sounds good as fuck. All right. Well, Someone you know. is playing in the future. It's a nine day for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have what some people consider to be the greatest player in punishing Grey Raven history. One of the greatest gotcha gamers of all time. I could sit here and go through a lexicon of accolades. This man has one hit running every single boss fight in the entire game. This man punishes himself every fucking day <laughs> by tormenting himself by grinding these goddamn games. And he does it with a fucking smile. We have a regs lent. Yo. Oh, hey guys. I don't know why I'm here today. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I wonder, man. I wonder. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not the best. There are a couple of... There, there's PGR players. There's a lot of uh, better guys also out there. Like who? But it's just... Hey, man, stop being so humble. Yeah, like who? <laughs> I, wa I watched you play and I started to cry. I was like... <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shit. Oh, uh, well, there's also Blanc, uh, B-L-A-N-C. He's also really good at the game. He also does the same thing as I do. Okay, but... but okay. Yeah, we're all just masochists in this game. Just gonna, We're just playing to get punished. Dude, would you win? Raven. Dude, I reacted uh, nah, to... <laughs> I reacted to a Punishing Grey Raven video of you. Maybe it was like a year, year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. Said, and I said, how hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. That, that. that was our first like point of first contact. First contact, dude. dude the <laughs> amount of people that said, "I'll fucking kill you, Rexlight's the best, you fucking pussy." <laughs> it was insane, bro. That shit was so uh, funny. But it, it's uh, a yeah, yeah. So uh, out of yeah. curiosity, real quick, I want to know which game do you prefer, Punishing Grey Raven or Wuthering Waves? So far. Okay, so I've actually touched on this topic before. Uh huh. Punishing Grey Raven, I think if you guys have tried it before, it's like an action game, but at the same time, you're also doing Candy Crush on the side for the abilities, the yep. orbs, if you remember, the yep. red, yellow, and blue orbs. 
So people who are good at action games may not be good at punishing Grey Raven because you're basically using like one another half of your brain to do orb management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, I think Wuthering Waves is more towards the full action side. That's one. And punishing Grey Raven, when you run a full team of three characters, mm. you still play like solo because the other two characters are mostly like their their involvement is just QTE, like QTE support. When you uh, you tap the button when they're ready, yeah. and they'll just like come in for one second and do an attack, and they disappear. But in Wuthering Waves, there's way more involvement when you when you fight enemies in a full team. You can see like characters still lingering on the field at the same time. Like you see a lot of this. So in that regard, I think I prefer Wuthering Waves when it comes to like pure that. combat. Yeah. Great. Uh, have you have you for Punishing Grey Raven? Did you enjoy the story? Is that does that give him a good story? A good story. Yeah. It. It's like every other CN games, you know, when when it launches, the story is kind of shit. Yeah. And then they, yeah, they get their act together and they start writing better. Yeah. It's it's at a pretty good place at the moment for PGR. Do you think PGR is worth starting? And just be as, as truthful as you can. Do you think PGR is worth? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll be, oh, no, I'll be honest with yeah. you. It's not really good to start from scratch in PGR. Like most okay. games, usually people say. Like, oh, the game's three years old. Like, that's the same logic for every game. Like, it's bad to start a game since you're so behind. Yeah. I think that's even more true for PGR because if you start right now, you're going to be fighting, like, content that is made meant for people who have played for years. Meanwhile, you have, like, no team and you're you're going to be stuck in, like, the initial grind sink of getting a team ready, getting all the gears ready, and by then you'll be, like, missing out on all the ongoing events. So yeah. usually yeah. I'll just tell people you want to play PGR. You either play, you either just get an account like a, yeah. a an account that's ready. Yeah, so yeah. you don't 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 miss out. That's smart. No 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 no. Start right now. Crimson Wave. Uh, start right. Uh, now. <laughs> right. She's so hot. She's so hot. Start right now. Oh yeah, she's good. <laughs> and they they just it, they're having the, 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 roof. the new patch oh. today. <laughs> Well, regardless, I really appreciate you being here. I know you have a very busy day today, but I really appreciate you taking the time to be on this. I'm very fucking oh, yeah, I, about this. No worries. Yeah, the the only reason I could be like all on all day today is because I took a whole week's uh leave from my work. <laughs> and that's why yeah. I could Wait, you're not you're not you're not full time content creator? No, I'm not. What do you do for I work? work for, I work in the IT sector. Okay. If if your channel were to blow up during Wuthering Waves, would you go full time or no? Uh, so I already told my my viewers that it's already slated. So this June I'm going. I'm transitioning to full time. There it is. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we got two people in this call who are transitioning <laughs> to full time. Man, that's big. Yeah. Cool, bro. Well, I wish you luck, man. I mean, I feel like you are going to be absolutely fine. And uh, hit me up if you need any uh, advice on how to make more money or how to get more <laughs> views on YouTube because I'm very, very, very good right. at that. Sure, I appreciate Check it, out. man. Yeah, cool. you have to ask. You have to ask Rex how much he spent on Gotcha Games. How much have you spent what? on Gotcha Games? <laughs> oh no, Bob, why? <laughs> Wait, how much have you F2P. spent? I'm, I'm F two P. What are you talking about? That's what I thought. Is he uh, not F two P? I thought no, he was F two P. No, 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 no. He. I, so I met Rex from FGO, and yeah. he was someone who had everything in P five, right? <laughs> and now he's like that in PGR too. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get the number here. Wait, have you spent more than me? He's spent more than probably everybody here in Gotcha Games. What's the Because I've, 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 I've spent half a mil. How much have you spent? No way. Okay, man, but that's, no not, way. That's, not, not, that's, not on, that's not all on your account, though. You did, like, giveaways. Yeah, stuff. no, you're right. On my account, I probably spent, yeah, like, 280 This is just his account. Okay. Just his own. Yeah, on just your account, how much have you spent? Which account? All of them together. <laughs> all of your like, Gotcha All your games. Gotcha. I, I didn't calculate... I didn't calculate that, <laughs> honestly. You should. I never... Ballpark? <laughs> um, maybe, well, if, if are we counting, like, the o- really old games? We're counting field? everything, man. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. We're counting yeah. everything. Oh, my. Um, maybe 200, 300K? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. Somewhere. Oh, I told you. What? That's why <laughs> Black History, man, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Nuclear no. drama. What? Fort Master exposes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You could have drawn it. Fuck, bro. bro. Oh, man, I, was, I was young and stupid, man. <laughs> that's You put a house. You bought a house and you put it into a gacha game, man. That's actually fucking insane. Okay. All right. Well, guys, we're going to get more into that later. Uh, lastly, <laughs> we have a man who's actually escaped the clutches of Genshin Impact, seeking newer horizons. I don't know if you're still on good terms with Zhang Leng or not, but we have the old number one advocate for Zhang Leng. Yo, how are you enjoying Weather and Waves, 1010? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm actually playing the game right now. I'm trying to grind all my Echo, so if I'm not paying attention, that's the reason. Hey, why. no, it's all good, man. No, it's all good. Yeah, my chat thought you were playing Osu. Oh, I mean, it's like the same thing. You know, you just hit the, you just hit the enemy, so... So it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. How are you enjoying the game from one to ten? Uh, I feel like I'm biased because I escaped Genshin for not having good combat, and this game has like way too good combat. Uh, if I were to give an overall scale, though, I'll give it like a seven out of ten. The combat probably like nine out of ten. Okay, all right. I'm curious. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of sevens right now. For me, for Wuthering Waves, uh, I don't really want to let y'all know how I actually. You know, you know I will. I, I feel like Wuthering Waves is everything I wanted Genshin to back to be. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like the story has had very nice moments. I think the characters are really great. Um, I think there are a lot of characters in Wuthering Waves that I actually consider to be better looking than even characters in Genshin Impact and uh, uh, Honkai Star Wars. For the men. I think the men in uh, yeah. the men in Wuthering Waves just look really fucking good. I'm really well, happy. To, sorry, to add to that point, yeah. because Genshin Impact ha character models are locked to the fixed height system. I think that... Uh, <laughs> is a hurdle for them to make nice proportionate characters yeah yeah the characters are like small medium large and everyone conforms to that size yep 100%. i think that yeah really so, hurts the designs is weathering waves is, is that is it not like that for that game it's like no wuthering it can be whatever wuthering waves, uh, yeah, yeah yeah wuthering waves is a uh, proportionate you check the whatever. heights and everything i did yeah. not know that oh damn bro okay we should get into that okay all right, well, uh, first things first, I just want to go around and, uh, you know, we're going to just keep this real easy. You know, we're going to do a thing called a compliment sandwich. Okay, and the reason why we do these things is because in the gotcha community, people can't take constructive criticism without being little pussies and crying about it. So we're going to do a compliment sandwich, and we're all going to go around the room, and we're all going to say three things that we really like about Wuthering Waves, which is great. That's completely fine. But afterwards, we're going to do the cons, because that's what I'm really here for, okay? I'll be real. It is important to talk about the pros for this game. It really is. But... Talking about the cons is very important because we need to get this information to the developers as quickly as possible on what the people like and do not like about this game in hopes that they will change before things go live. I want this game to do very good. I don't want Genshin Impact to be sitting alone at the fucking top. I also, I'll be keeping 100%, I don't fucking want to play the goddamn game anymore. I'll, I honestly haven't in the past two years. I don't give a fuck if Genshin gets better at all. The only thing that I want is for Wuthering Waves to have competition that they have to compete with and make sure that their product stays as good as possible. I don't think Genshin Impact can be saved. I think it's completely fucking done. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. I fucking hate that fucking game. That's pretty much where, where I'm at. Okay, I want Wuthering Waves. That's how you really it. feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. 100%. But Wuthering Waves is what I want to play. And I want it to be good. So I want to start off with the three things because we do want to let them know also what we really like so that way they'll keep it in the game and not change it. Now, I will just first and foremost, and I'm, I'm, we need to change. We need to change that stupid fucking dumb grass thorn bitch design, bro. I hate that shit so much. Holy fuck, she's so ugly. Uh, other than that, though, Fob, we're going to start off with you, man. What are three things that you really like about Wuthering Waves? You have all the time in the world to express this. Um, I think the game has pretty much everything that a hardcore player wants. Um, Endgame is very good. The boss battles are very, very immersive. Um, when you say Endgame, what do you mean? Um, like, so they have their own simulated universe, um, like from HSR. They have their own Abyss system. But then on top of that, they have the hologram bosses as well. And it's just, it's just an outlet for people to like show off their skill, you know, like, sure, you can over level and probably just unga bunga these bosses eventually. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm expecting like the second Wuthering Waves comes out, there'll be like just the ocean of people doing like no hit run solos with like specific characters and stuff like that. Or, you know, they'll, maybe there'll be someone that's like, oh, level one, level one character, level one weapon, level one skill solo, like, you know, yeah. uh, so like, I feel like that type of stuff is 
what hardcore characters or hardcore players love so like that's like a huge benefit and let, let's be honest genshin doesn't have anything like that it's like what people have to give them some sell some fake restriction in abyss and be like oh i'm gonna spin a <laughs> slot wheel to see which characters i get <laughs> and you know yeah it's like that's that's just a stupid you know yeah i agree so that's probably my uh top point number two is uh, i think the and whole, before I, you move past what is a hologram oh, yeah. for people who do not know what does that mean oh it's that uh it's that boss you, uh video yeah, you were watching boss. from Steparo earlier um so that was that, insane. Called, yeah they're called hologram bosses i i do think the heron is the easiest of the four um because i i'm not gonna lie the others have way crazier mechanics like it's so cringe so like for example so the the heron realistically doesn't have like a crazy new move on difficulty four on difficulty four monkey he summons little boy band members that throw thirteen thousand damage hits at you which one shot you and you have to just dodge constantly and then the uh thundering mephis guy literally summons his, his like boyfriend over to like double team you constantly nice. and then yeah and then the morning ikes just shoots mach 10 homing missiles at you endlessly so who's the motherfucker it, who kamehameha's um that's that's the more uh, that's a thundering mephis yeah, bro that, that fight that looks so clone. fucking cool i was watching yeah. rex fight that dude and get his ass but like that's just difficulty <laughs> four <laughs> right <laughs> That's just difficulty four. And from what we've seen, almost like every difficulty introduces a new boss mechanic, boss like attack. So yeah. there's difficulty five and six. We don't even know what those do. And then difficulty five and six have their own specific buffs and debuffs that the boss can do to you, which is like, all right. So they have new moves and they're going to do new debuffs. Like, holy shit. Like, all right. <laughs> and they have one shot attacks too. Well, I think that's only realistically because we're under level do it, uh, versus ah, okay. it, right? Like Steparo in that video, he was getting hit for like thirteen thousand plus, right? Um, that's because he's fighting a boss ten levels above him, you know. That makes so sense. Yeah. it might be different once we're actually at level. What's up, about um, I feel like here's the thing though is I've seen so many arguments that are like, yeah, but all these people are under leveled. Like as soon as you're leveled. It'll be easy. Shut the hell up. You cannot look at those move sets and be like, oh yeah, it's just gonna be easy. No shot. Yeah. It's so it's so fast. If they tag you with it, like I don't know how the damage will scale. Like oh. if, you, if all of a sudden you're level 80, like maybe it does change things, but like if you if you aren't good at the game, you're gonna get tagged for a lot of damage and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's I agree. just no if way. You, if you're not a gamer, it. yeah, I, I could see you getting absolutely slapped. Uh, I will say, um, Difficulty three is level 60 bosses, and now we're level 60 at um, Union level 30. Eh, kind of a cakewalk now, um, but, yeah, you know, I, it might all, I might also be saying that because, you know, uh, maybe I'm a gamer. And you also, are. I've, also, I've fought the <laughs> boss for hours at this point, so I know yeah. the, most of the mechanics, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's number two. Give me one more, Fob um oh wait no no number two was the ecosystem e ecosystem i think it's a nice little way they've done like a different take on artifacts and relics yeah. from how, how does the shiny art. system work for echoes do you know okay so unfortunately the shinies as they are right now are mm -hmm. there's only six i think and three of them are bosses and the others are like pretty much fixed uh, i think the turtle is fixed location spawn, but yeah. I'm assuming once the game actually comes out, they'll have it actually fully implemented. The shiny system isn't really fully implemented right so now. So just just because this is what I'm wondering, and if anybody knows this question, let me know. Uh, so if I capture a shiny echo and then I summon it, is it still shiny? Well, so yeah. there is only one way to really, there are two ways to summon it. Um, yeah. It's there's a projection which is like you have to show it off and I guess co-op like it's like a pokeball and you summon it. It yeah. doesn't move; it just sits there um so it is shiny in there and i think when you use them as your skill attack as well you will see the color so yeah oh that's so cool i've i've been told that sweetly you have a shiny yeah i found one on stream i came across a wow. turtle <laughs> yeah, you have a shiny and, turtle and the, no the great thing about shinies in this game is you can farm it with your friends so if you find one in your world you can call in two other friends and then they can all get the shiny 
Yeah. Well, oh, I'm not going to do that because then how am I supposed <laughs> to make them feel bad about themselves? <laughs> the be- there's another part about the shiny. So right yeah. now there's each, uh, I mean, most of the elements only have one boss of their element, but let's say for Morning Ikes, right? There's a shiny version of Morning Ikes. Right now, if you use two Morning Ikes boss uh, echoes, you don't get a set effect. But if you use a normal Morning Ikes and a shiny Morning Ikes, you get a set effect. So it actually, like, it actually makes it so like you want to get a shiny so that you can kind of so there's uh, i'm just rambling at this point but there's a there's there's an ecosystem in this game where you essentially have up to 12 costs so you essentially right now i think the best loadouts are either four three three one one or four four three one yeah so you essentially i have no have idea what option. you're talking about i just want to make sure you know that i have no idea what yeah so about. so <laughs> it's really hard to explain without showing visuals but there's yeah. basically five sets it, it'll come down to whether you're running a five set or a two set two set yeah. right and on between those you can run two sets of bosses plus smaller echoes or um the five sets of a one boss and then a bunch of smaller echoes so it's like yeah with the shiny, it allows you to run double boss outside of thunder because for some reason thunder is the only element that has a double like two two different bosses, you know. So it is a nice little. The shinies are nice. Yeah, I feel like I'm stupid. I just don't get what I don't understand anything. But I appreciate it. Somebody understood that. I just did. I was not one of those people. But that was cool though. You ever watch Exco Solo? No. What the hell is that? Oh, nothing. Anyways, yo, Brax. <laughs> yo. What? Is up, dog. What are your top three favorite things on Weathering Waves, homie? <laughs> okay, okay. So, obviously, I feel like the combat's very good, but like Bob was saying, I think yeah. the echo system is a super, like, unique take yeah. on combat because it, like, you take, like, this already, like, pretty complex combat system with parries, perfect dodge timing, stuff like that, but then you add, like, a different slottable attack that any character can use. Right? <laughs> or maybe not even an attack, but, like, an effect, right? And I think that's, like, super fucking sick um so i think they did an amazing job with that uh do you want wait do you want like a pro a con in their pro no nope, i want, want three, three pros okay. we're gonna get to the cons after this gotcha gotcha you okay. can't you can't give gotcha players constructive criticism without them shitting themselves you don't tell them something good first we have to keep it keep it light all right for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yep. uh <laughs> yeah um someone else said the the model wait that might have been you actually the yeah. the models in this game i feel like i actually like them a lot i love them. i i i think that I do genuinely enjoy like Genshin's character designs, but I think the the Weathering Waves characters have like a more like mature take on them. I feel like, you know, I, like I, I feel like you like uh, the angular faces on the med is like pretty cool. Like it, they have their very own style, um, and y- you can really tell. Like a bunch of people that are complaining about these designs are just not really used to like. I feel like those kind of like sharper angles, like that uh, crow <laughs> style. So yeah. It's really fucking cool. I love that. Yeah, I feel like as far as waifus go, I feel like Yelan and Kafka are my number ones from both of HSR and Genshin. Mm. And then I feel like uh, Yinling, even Jian Jin, I really like. Like, I really like their designs a lot. Uh, I'm still okay, torn on which one I like more. There's a lot of recency bias right now for Wuthering Waves. But uh, yeah, we'll see what porn comes out. Maybe it'll change my mind. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the female uh, main protagonist is one of, I think she's the finest main protagonist I've seen in a gacha game. I agree. Yeah. 100%. 100 billion percent. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, what else, uh, The Last thing, I feel like the, I just really fucking like the hologram bosses. I was so worried for this game when I was doing overworld shit because they had nerfed Crownless in the opening tutorial compared to the previous CBT. Um, and so I was kind of worried that they had like nerfed everything to make it like more accessible without keeping any of it for endgame. And then I don't know if hologram is technically endgame, but it is definitely way fucking harder. And it's so hype to get in there and get my ass kicked, not because I'm under the geared, but because I like can't parry. Yeah. Right. Cause then you like <laughs> learn to parry, right? And yeah. you get better and you can fix it. And that's fucking yeah. sick. Dude, parrying is scary, bro. I'll be real. Like, I'm a, I am just dodge, right? Parrying, yeah. I don't know. Like, if it happens, great. And, and you know what? It yeah. doesn't work unless you parry. Because yeah. you cannot dodge enough times. You literally yeah. run out of dodges before they attack again. So <laughs> you get fucked. Yeah, I'm going to need to watch somebody's guide on how to fuck to parry in this goddamn game. Because right now I'm just doing it <laughs> out of panic. I have no idea how to intentionally parry right now. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I think these are great points you brought up, Brax. Fuck yeah, man. All right, Sweetily. Hello. First, I want to say I love your model so much. It is so cute. Thank you. 
thank you. I, I can't stop looking at your little ears wiggling the whole time. It's like hypnotic to me. It's, <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, so I wanted to know, uh, what are your what are your top three favorite things about Wuthering Wave so far? My top one's probably combat. The ability to parry, dodge, and then quick swap. You can cancel so many things too. Like you summon your, you press your skill, and then your echo can cancel your skill. And then you can swap your character, hmm. and then that cancels your echo animation, or your echo keeps going off, but your character enters the battlefield. So I really like there's like a lot of things you can do with your character in, this com in the combat. And every character has different things going on. Yeah, but their I've little forte bar at the thing at the bottom that charges up with like each use every character has like their own little kit which is pretty fun to learn yeah i didn't know i didn't know anything about that so apparently every single character has like a character passive or some shit do you do, do y'all know anything yeah. about that like how does that work and so for the main character for instance yeah. if you just press her basic attack three times her gourd will light up and then if you time the last press of the basic attack while the gore lights up, she does like a special attack. What? That's the one of the fuck? really one of our main character, the rover. Yeah, the yeah. the our, our MCs moves, and then same when she does a heavy attack, the gourd will glow, and then you can time it with that, and then you do a special attack. There's like a lot of timing timing related things. Yeah, yeah, like echo or no? What what's the encore? The fire girl? Like if you do her normal attack, she it, it just like flashes, and then you. You can press it again, and she'll like make her her normal attack. Will she'll like summon her little doll in, and it'll do an attack. And then on her E ability, it goes bop 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 bop, and it's like a like kind of like a Gatling gun. And yeah. then it, it flashes, and then you do it, and then she slams down with like this big bear thing. And it's mm -hmm. it, but if you don't do it, it just it, the attack never happens. I didn't know that, bro. I've just been spamming left click to be honest. And then I'm like, okay, I'm scared. I'll prop my alt that way. I iframe because I can't dodge. Right? It works out great. <laughs> Yo, it's really, what are two more things that you've been enjoying about Weathering Waves? And the second one, I think that's been pretty huge for me, is the running and movement in this game, I feel like, is top tier. Hmm. We don't need stamina, so when you're just sprinting around the world, it doesn't decrease your stamina bar, so you can keep sprinting. And then you can literally wall sprint. If you're yep. climbing like a cliff, and then when you're right under a ledge, you do like a cool little flip. Dude, dude. <laughs> I think that's super sick. That is a feature that I feel like has gone completely unnoticed and completely underappreciated. The the flip over the like little yeah, ledges. That's really cool. It's the best thing they've ever added for movement to a, one of these open world RPGs. It is. There's nothing worse than climbing some bullshit and then there being an awkward ledge and then your character's like, oh, I don't know what to do, man. And then you have to go all the way back down, dude. It is so nice. It is such a good feature. One has access to the grapple tool, which is pretty mm. much like a like if you play Genshin, the, like a free Kazuha. You just get to lift yourself into the air for a little bit. Yeah, or if so you play you can Monster grapple Hunter, into a jump. Yep. Pretty yeah, much. If you play Monster Hunter Rise too, it's like the wire bug. For anybody who hasn't seen it, they added wire bug to the game. It is so much fun. Yeah, so the running and the movement speed, I think, is my number two. The mm. vaulting, and then when you're running over objects, you vault over. Like all the little details about. It. You don't you don't just stop when you run into a rock. You do yeah. like a little sick vaulting animation and then you jump up and then you run across the wall. It's pretty sick. Mm. So running movement's probably my number two. And then number three probably the ecosystem. I feel like that has a lot of potential. It's kind of related to combat, but being able to go around and have some incentives for farming the monsters and it's a bit more exciting than I'm farming the monster to see what it drops. Here it's like I'm farming the monster, will it drop me an echo? And then kind of seeing what the stats is. Because usually in games you farm the monsters for like some materials and then you use it to level up your characters. Here it's like every monster drops their echo and then you can turn into the monster. I feel like the echoes have so much potential. They should let us turn into the echoes and then just write them as mounts in the game. Dude, that's what <laughs> I, I thought like they the were going to do. System, that, there's like so much potential, so I'm really excited. Yeah, Hopefully I thought... they do something like that. I thought they were going to do that with the motorcycle guy. I thought that once we killed the motorcycle guy, we'd yeah. be like allowed to ride around his fucking motorcycle. That would have been very insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for sure they'll do that eventually. And they'll have like one for like lakes where you can like, or, like go on like a jet ski or some bullshit. Or like that car mob. Dude, when I got told that I have a Honda Civic in my inventory, I was like, bro, do I get to drive this shit? Bro, that, that mob is so cool. Uh, but yeah, thank you for sharing. Yo, I'm tashed. Um, I would say that the combat, especially once I got into the the why why can't I think of the word the, the 
yep. tougher ones. Yep. Mm-hmm. That thing. Hologram? The tougher bosses. Yeah, the holograms. There we yep. go. Like the world bosses, when I first fought it, I was like, hold on a second. This is like quite easy. And I, I was like, oh, wait, did I get lied to about this game? Yep. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I, I think that's a probably good thing because then people can warm up to it. And it, it almost is a stage system. It's like you fight the first version, like the open world, and then you start getting your way into the harder stuff with the new move sets. And I think that that's fine. Um, overall, I really enjoy how each character has their own rotation. So in Genshin, it feels like EQ, EQ, swap. Like, like it feels like the, every character has the exact same pattern. It's yep. like a sub DPS, you pop their abilities and then you swap over with this one. Um, like with the, with, with the MC, they've got their own rotation where you want to do your attacks and, 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 you know, you want to try to do those, those kind of combos encore same thing she does her attacks and with encore when she's in the animation of her like charge attack you can swap and she'll stay on the field and attack and then you can swap to your other person and do their rotation and it's so interesting it's so i didn't realize how cool it was going to be and the intro and outro skills did not realize how good they were going to be oh i didn't realize i I didn't know i wanted that but it's such an interesting take on on uh combat It, it feels good to swap um but yeah, it just I think the combat and and just the overall character feel are like the two main things for me because that's what I've always cared about. Yeah. And then um I would say the third thing is it's an intangible but it's the potential. Yeah, I agree. I I see what the game is doing now and it's it's early on and I'm like if they just continue to go down this road and and I made the comparison to Honkai Star Rail. Honkai mm. Star Rail was really good. But then they're like, okay, let's do another world for the simulated universe. And then another one. And then let's make a new game mode in that. And then let's do MOC. But then let's do pure fiction. Like, they keep building new systems that are long-term. And I feel like doubling down on what they've already got. I want P- or not what PGR, uh, Withering Waves. I want them to do that as well. Take what you've got. Expand on it. Take those holograms. Expand on it. Do some modifiers. Whatever it is. But... I, I think that they have a, a really great opportunity. It's just, will they do it? That's my that's my only negative is yeah. the, is the can they actually pull it off? And uh, yeah. I mean, I I think they can because I feel like they have a very because these uh, Wuthering is a very good position because it has a blueprint of what to do and what not to do. And essentially, they get to learn from the successes and failures of Genshin Impact, which is a very similar game. Uh, yeah, go ahead, keep going. Here's the only issue with that. Yep. So did Diablo 4. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, but that's, that's made by issue. Blizzard. That's made by Blizzard. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it always scares me. It's like, they knew what they could have done. They had their own goddamn game. They had, you know, the Path of Exile. They had so many opportunities to succeed. Yeah. Um, but then again, Last Epoch is a pretty damn good ARPG that could also learn those lessons. So Absolutely. I'm just praying I, I I'm just praying they're 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 going down the right path long term. I I believe in Kuro games. I do genuinely believe in them. I've 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 had some interactions with them and I've got nothing but uh positive uh positivity from them so far. Like w- good feels. But uh we'll see. Maybe they just want to shit the bed. Who knows? But to me I think they have a cash cow. Like if they all went on this fucking game, the number one thing that I think they need to worry about right now is marketing. Uh, I know we all on this call are helping that quite a bit because I believe almost all of us have made a Wuthering Wave video by now, which will obviously help. And uh, you hopefully they'll put out more sponsorships, more partnerships. And uh, they if they don't have day one drops for Wuthering Waves, they should just fucking retire the game. Because if they put drops and they let people farm that shit on Twitch, we'll have 400, 500,000 viewers on Twitch day one, which obviously isn't going to hurt. So... Hopefully the marketing team gets their head out of their ass and they start. I mean, they're they're doing a pretty good job so far, but uh, I think everything's gonna come down to marketing. And uh, I would love to talk to their marketing to, uh, team so far because I'm very good at that. But uh, we'll see if the communications can be established or not. All right, Mister Pokey, are you fucking done? Yo, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for yapping too much, man. Yeah, no, that's right, good. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're good. Give me three things you like about yeah. uh, three things you like about Wuthering Wives. Right. Um, I think a lot of things has really been mentioned, so I'm just gonna yeah. keep it brief. You're so good. That I wouldn't yet. Yeah, you're good. Um, right. I, I think the first one is okay. I I, I think I'm I'm actually like the l- slowest of everyone. I just hit level like 18. You're higher like, than me. 
one hour ago. You're higher than me. I'm higher than you. I've, I've played the game like four hours, but then I stopped. I've been doing other shit. Oh my god, that's crazy, man. Okay, uh, I think the first thing I really, really like yeah. is um, it's, it kind of reminds me of Xenozone Zero. Like when you swap between characters, you get some sort of synergy. So one example is you know the the pink Aboba girl, uh, Tao Tao Qi. Sure. Right. When, when her outro skill is increased skill damage for your next user. It, is that the chick with the huge boobs or the chick with the doll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the chick with the huge boobs. Okay. And yep. she works really well with the chick with, with the doll on Encore. Because yeah. Encore, she does a shit ton of damage with her skill. Yeah. So, like, it's just one example that I noticed that, like, I wouldn't even have realized this until I read the skills. So, the potential for team building is, like, is definitely up there. Even though, like, I'm not sure because I never played Genshin, but, like, Congratulations. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think yeah, it's pretty cool that it's there's huge. a lot of team building going on. Yeah, that's one. Uh, number two, I, I also really, really like the ecosystem, but um, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, sword because, okay, I guess it's kind of towards the cons, so I wouldn't talk about it that much, but it's pretty cool to, and refreshing to see that you can farm relics without really grinding that much on the stamina. <clears throat> so you can just go around hunting stuff and you can use your actual relics that you can actually turn into the Pokemon and then you just like kill stuff, so that's pretty cool. And then lastly, it's just... I'm looking forward to the end game. I think so far, all the end game from Mihoyo, even Hongai Stario, is not that challenging compared to the end game that we're seeing here. Like the no hit runs, like zero cycling MOC versus like doing this like no hit is like completely different. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I don't want to undersell Honkai Staro because I know there is an opportunity to do so. I, I do think, you know, some of the more challenging clears for Honkai Staro are impressive because it comes more so down to planning and strategy whereas you know for Wuthering Waves it's going to come down to reflexes and general gaming ability right I do think there is impressive feats for both and I do think the games both are really good I don't want to bury Honkai Star Rail whatsoever I do still believe it's the number one gacha game ever made uh, I, I just fucking love that game so much the character is very good story is very good the thing I am really worried about is that we're five people in and nobody has talked about the story. So I do want to talk about that later. Hopefully that comes up in one of y'all's pros. But if not, we'll, we'll get onto that later. Uh, but yeah, what was your next uh, positive, <laughs> Mr. Bogey? Oh, it's the, it's the end game. End oh, okay. game, Echoes, and the team building. Okay, yeah. cool. Fuck yeah. Who's your favorite character so far? Hauchi. That's big tits? The, the pink. <laughs> Don't call her that, okay? She's she's more than that. She's uh, genuinely, I, okay. She's genuinely good. Genuinely? She, she, she has a built-in parry. She has a she has a heal. I think she's great for beginners. So yeah, genuinely. Yeah. You you know what else she has? What huge fucking boobs, bro? That shit is crazy, bro. I mean, like you can't give a character boobs that enormous and not expect people to talk about them. Uh, regardless, yeah, I didn't really know this at first. Yeah. Mm, yes, yes you fucking did. <laughs> yes, you fucking did. All right, yo, Smack. What do you like about the game so far, man? Uh, I mean, everybody's pretty much done a good job, like covering all the things I was going to talk about, but sure. I'll still go over them. The boss fights are incredible. They're what I wanted them to be. They're exhilarating. They also have uh, powerful music packed behind them that like just breathes energy into you while you're playing it. Um, I'm looking forward to the hologram fights, which I still haven't got to. I guess I've been yapping uh, my chat's ears off too much and not playing the game enough, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but I do. I love the boss fights in a combination with the music. Um, I think I want to see a little bit more move sets. But like I said, I'm limited because I haven't made it to the holograms. I think they these guys have been getting all of that done. Yep. Uh, the Echo system is one of the most beautiful, innovative systems I've ever seen in any game. Like taking a Pokemon system, combining it with the Relic system from other gacha games, and then just making it the focal point of your progression is just fascinating to me now i am curious um, was it you who made the video where they weren't crazy about the echo system or no was that somebody no, else hell no no that was not me absolutely not. was that I, anybody I in this call did anybody not like the echo system uh there's parts of it i don't like like but what oh, but yeah. okay time. we'll talk about that next part okay because i'm yeah. very curious yeah, yeah. i heard calls, some people bitch so. but i, I want to know what, what they're what the problem is keep us back it's a it's a triple threat i love the idea of of in, uh, in integrating it into your combat system, which creates more diversity and team building and team strategizing around how you're gonna do your combos and then use that uh, echo to, I don't know, counter the freaking monster when he's about to pop his ult and, and one shot you. I love stuff like that. I also love the idea of that being your relic system because now it creates room for them to develop more um, echoes in the future, which creates more 
uh, designs. Their designs look flawless for these Echoes. I think it's one of the most beautiful Echo designs I've seen, you know, from a monster standpoint. I, I like the motorcycle design yeah. guy. I like uh, every single elite boss that I've, I've fought. Their design is amazing. And then, of course, the exploration. The exploration looks amazing, man. Like, um, I, I'm pretty sure majority of the time I've spent on streams is just me going around farming Echoes and knocking out puzzles and stuff. Like, I actually have a good time exploring. There's, there's incentive to yeah. explore. The, the idea of I'm going to go fill out my Pokedex fills me with joy when I'm exploring. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm on my way to this point. Whereas on the opposition factor, not to throw Genshin under the bus, but like there's no incentive to explore other than the nice music and the scenery looks <clears throat> nice, but there's nothing to do in the open world. You know, so I, I, that was huge for me. And then my third thing is the combat system, of course. Uh, the I think a recipe for follow the stream is the is a parry and a perfect evasion. You put that in any game, and it's going to be a beautiful combat uh, experience. Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree. Uh, who have you have you gotten the uh, the monkey one yet? The big gorilla with the with the log with with the log. Yeah, yeah bro, bro slaps. <laughs> that shit's got to be OP, man, dude. Just using that <laughs> shit was when I I fell in love with the ecosystem. I thought the mm. turtle was funny. But when I used the gorilla, I was like, oh shit, bro. It's the, it's literally the boss from Sekiro brought into Wuthering Waves. Bro, it is so fucking sick. Yeah, I'm glad that you yeah. said the exploration, dude. I would have never pegged you for a uh, exploration guy whatsoever. Well, it's it's the it's the Pokemon experience. It's the going around and farming up echoes. And then, uh, like Pokey said, it's the, the relic systems tied to them. So you also get relic drops. The rarity of that is yeah. that's a dopamine rush, man. The the potential of getting it. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Um, I did want to bring up one more thing, though. The multiplayer mode, which I... This is a third-party experience. Vulcan told me that you can literally get people in a party and, like, dwindle down your efficiency of getting out, farming out Echoes and farming out Relics with just having a four-man party. Apparently, everyone can all farm Echoes, and you can get it done twice to three times to four times as fast. Three, so three, three, man. That's amazing. Huh? Really? Three man. Uh, three man. Wuthering Waves only uh, as a party of three. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, either way, though, like being able to do that is incredible. That's yeah. the ultimate incentive to hop on multiplayer with voice chat with the boys while just grinding it out, saving you time, too. Oh, sh I did not know that. Okay. I, I wonder. Know. I wonder how much of the gameplay loop will be required. Like, how long will it take to farm every echo in the game every day? <laughs> right. <laughs> Because, like, I'll be real, um, I myself, me personally, have been clearing every mob in Honkai Star Rail every day by myself. And it's not anybody else doing that for me. Uh, and that takes about two and a half hours every day, and it gives you about maybe, like, 200,000 credits every day. So, I, I mean, I don't need to do that, but I am doing that currently. And uh, it does put you quite ahead, but if you're able to farm Echoes every day, I wonder how yeah. long that'll take, and I wonder how ahead that'll put you. Not, And here's the best thing. It doesn't matter how ahead it puts you, because somebody else's progress does not affect your progress of your game whatsoever. It's not an MMO. But I do wonder how much that will make free-to-play players able to compete with whalers who have less time by just being able to make up for it with grinding and uh, just, you know, dedication. But it's very interesting. All right, yo, 1010, uh, we're getting to the end of this here. If you have something new to say, go for it. But if not, just be like, yeah, I agree with these motherfuckers. Uh... Yeah, for the most part, it's like, yeah. I agree, like, the combat and things. Uh, the one big thing I do want to bring up is, like, yeah. I'm a really big fan of technological design, like, guns and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's the part I really like. And, again, like, I really like how they, every character have a unique play style because every character have a unique character passive. Like, in Genshin Impact, it's just how many ways you can make a pyro character not Shangling, and all of them just turn out to be <laughs> Shangling, you know? Like, like every character play the same, but because every character have a unique passive, in Wedding Wave, like, they all feel really different. That part I really, really like. Yeah, who, who is, like, who are your favorite characters to use so far in Wedding Wave? Uh, Chisha. And that's not because she's a four-star fire character, by the way. Oh, Chisha, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, red-haired chick, right? The one, the, the one that we yeah. have? Yeah. Yeah. Is that how you say her name? It's Chisha? No, this guy never says any names right, bro. <laughs> oh, wait, how do you what? say it? What? I thought it was, I thought it was Chixia. Wait, how do you say it, Fob? It's Chixia, yeah. I, I swear... Bro, I was watching Ten Ten's clip talking about Encore. He calls her Anchor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not, bro. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Actually, closer to what her name is actually in Chinese. 
Encore oh, was. Well, but, but we're reading the English here. So. I see. Yeah, let me tell you what language we speak over here. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's insane. Okay. All right. Uh, yo, Ragza, what are three things that you're liking about Wuthering Wave so far? Um, three things. I think everybody has already raised combat, so I'll skip that over. Sure. Uh, what I really like is the aesthetic Hold on, what of are you the doing? game. What are you doing right now? I am You're... running around in withering. There right it now. is. Okay, I can tell. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're grinding. Dude. Dude. We are, we're, I think we're all grinding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm incapable okay. of doing that, dude. I have so to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For the aesthetics, uh, I think the world is really beautifully crafted. The way the the light, the skybox reacts with all the objects in the world. It's really, really good. It's beautiful. Like I've. I've used the camera a few times to take screenshots myself in the game. Yeah. It's just too good, man. Yeah, I think it's a very, very, very pretty fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it's really pretty. Uh, that's one, aesthetic. The second yeah. one, this one coming from PGR, what I really like is that I feel that their character modeling never misses. That's what I think. Yeah, like the the way they design the characters, the renders, the models, uh, the anatomy, the, the proportions, they're really, really good. I feel like Kuro never misses on this aspect when it comes to character design. I mean, the wall, yeah, they do. They miss with that fucking dumbass thorn child. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, that <laughs> one. I understand why. <laughs> God, bro, I hate her design. I, so, I mean... I get it. I get why she looks like that, but I don't know, man. I, I, I okay, just can't but, stand it. But Rover, though, Rover, Rover the main good. character, oh, looks so good. Oh, it looks amazing, 100%. 10 out of 10. Yeah, Rover looks amazing. She Kakarot looks amazing. Uh, yeah, Yinlin, Jenjing. Dude, especially the facial expressions for Wuthering Waves. I feel like I've gone yeah, very yeah, on yeah, them. Yeah. They're yeah, very good. They they have a lot of micro expressions that they got. They nailed it. They nailed the micro expressions, making them look really lifelike. Yeah. Like uh, like yeah. Jen Jing's breathing when she focuses on like the chi and the yin yang and she does like the the slight exhale while she's doing her fucking like martial arts. Oh my god, it is so fucking good. I love it. Yep. For my third point, I think sound design is another thing that they really nailed it. It ranges from ambient sounds. So like when you're like in a really high place, you can actually hear like the the wind blowing into your ears, like emulated. There's also skill sounds, and like if you're in a waterfall, you can hear the the echoing of the cave, like yeah. in a cave behind a waterfall. That and also like when you're doing puzzles, where there's one puzzle where you throw the tiles into the grids, it has that satisfying system sound i don't know I, when i hear it i just get happy man my dopamine my dopamine rush when i hear the sound <laughs> now i am curious i heard this from my chat the other day uh i believe mr Tangaman, mr tenha released a video saying that uh well you know he wasn't too ecstatic about a lot of things for wuthering waves one of the things that he brought up was that he didn't feel like the hit satisfaction was there so when you hit a mob it doesn't feel agree. satisfied okay enough. i agree Okay. Yeah. For this it one, the parry sound, bro. I for swear. this one, I yeah. feel like there's some. I I feel like there's some uh, imbalance to the bass volumes for certain things, not just the uh, combat character voices as well. So I hope that it's just a Beta setting thing. that they didn't adjust for this CBT because I hear the same sounds that I heard in CBT one, but it's just that it's abnormally low. It's very soft. Okay. So hopefully, yeah, it's just a setting. Me personally, I don't have an issue with it. Not saying that your criticism is wrong. I think that it's okay right now. But I know Fob and Smack. What 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 is it about it that you don't like? I'll give you a perfect example. When I yeah. when when you go into the GN ball after the cutscene of GN, our general comes in and yeah. then you get to play with him. When you pop his ult, it looks absolutely incredible. But it, yeah. I just feel like I'm not doing anything because I can't hear nothing with it. He's just like. He's ticking all over the place. I, I can barely hear the sound. I can't feel the weight of the moves. I can't feel the the like the the strength of the moves. I, now he's going off, and I'm seeing it happen. But I even asked my whole chat too. I was like, "Am I nuts here? Or yeah. Are y'all hear this too?" So everybody was agreeing with me. But that was like the number one uh, way for me to confirm that the, the the shit doesn't sound. But I'll be honest. I'm always comparing SFX 
to to lost arcs sfx that was some of the best damn sound effects i've ever I agree. in any game 100%. so i was just like when i when i like play a new game i have that as my uh as my standard and if it doesn't hit it i'm like oh hell this they need to improve this which uh which character did you have an issue with uh genian when he does his dragon move he's like going in, the dragon's like popping off bro it's just like aoe Jin-yan. do i have that Jin-yan? Jin-yan. Uh, Jin-yan, yeah. Jian is the green as a tall that's, the, oh, that's, the, that's our general brother. oh Jian. okay wuthering waves and you don't like his alt i no, it's not that i don't like his ult. the yeah. sfx on the ult doesn't it doesn't make his ult uh more potent like it should be more strong basically all right let me i'm gonna i'm gonna play it real quick so chat can see real quick and let's see what they think real quick all right boys let me know what y'all think because uh Uh, this is very interesting i've heard a lot of people complain about this i'm i'm maybe i'm missing something here let me see real quick it's it's not i mean that's that's not cpt that's the old one you're showing you're showing old footage okay so is the old one good and the new one's bad it's no the old one is they changed him like it's okay. All animations they've changed. Oh, here we go. Uh, four four days ago. Four days ago. All right. Let's skip to alt, which should have a cut. There we go. Here we go. Probably right here. Yeah, let's see this. I think so. I don't know. I do think the sound effects are pretty. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they're different from the last meta. I don't know. The last okay, meta, yeah. I mean, the yeah, they made it. They made it a lot quieter. Yeah, okay. I, I see my, that. My biggest gripe yeah. is the fucking parry sound. I swear the parry sound got nerfed. It used to be yeah. like giga bass boosted, but yeah. now it's like yeah, it feels, it feels limp dick, and I'm like, what? man, that doesn't feel as good. <laughs> yeah, they should do. Literally just do a bass a bass boost bro. drop. Each yeah. time you parry, that'd be sick as fuck. Okay, yeah. so that's some that's some important to note. So that we have right here, hit satisfaction does not feel as good as it should. Uh, so now I want to get into um, the next segment, and this is probably the most important segment. I'm a believer that every game needs constructive criticism to become the game that we all want it to be, and I really want to go in depth here. Okay, there's not going to be a limit. I want to talk about literally every single thing that you guys do not like or feel like it could be improved, and how. If you already have those suggestions, I feel like this is very important. Uh, and we've already started off with the, you know, the hits. So we're going to start, uh, Regslent, you keep going until you don't want to say anything else. And for this, once he said the piece, I would like for you to just simply raise your hand if you agree and don't raise your hand if you disagree. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. That way we can see who's on board and who's not. The first thing, and I'll start it off. Uh, There's a very simple one. I don't feel like the glider moves fast enough, and I really don't like that. I had the same issue with Genshin Impact, where in Breath of the Wild, whenever you glide off of something, it feels very exciting. And sometimes I would just climb things just to go up, just to glide off. So I am curious, are you guys happy with the glide system, or do you also think that it's way too fucking slow? I think it's fine. I'm indifferent. Yeah. Too slow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's slow, but also the the little grappling hook you can use. Yeah. I feel like they need to extend the range a little bit. It feels like such a like a like yeah. I don't know. It just it feels so bad. So you do that and then you glide and I yeah. don't know. I I wish it was just a touch. Then I'll more, put more ask a speed. better question. Would you guys be happier if it flew faster? Yes, I would. No, yes, because I, I, I think, would. I think it has combat repercussions. How the fuck? Okay. How no, in the no, no, fuck because... does a glider have combat repercussions? No, no, it does. It does. Yeah. Actually, okay. if you so if you're playing the game correctly, you should yep. be using grapple and gliding, some boss mechanics and stuff like that. But it, it, grappling realistically. But imagine the glider is faster. You could actually just use the grapple and fucking use the glider to just avoid some boss moves. And that's like, I feel that like that would be it takes awesome. Away a little... No, uh, no, nah, nah, I think Fob's got a point there, but what I can say, Fob, is they can easily just implement it in a setting where you just can't use the glider during boss. Yeah, fights. I suppose they can make it so you can't. But that's can't. a fair point. That's yeah, a fair point. Like, they'd have to do that. If they <laughs> did like that, then I'd be fine boss. with it. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot cool of boss attacks fuck. that are only on the floor. And if you're just above it, then it's like for the whole time, it's like, come on, man, yeah. you're just cheesing the whole mechanic. <laughs> it's also like putting a gliding mount in the game. It t- kind of takes away from the exploration of the game because you're just flying around the place all the goddamn time. You know, like, Heck, you just. Gotta, just got a parry little pup. No, parrying has nothing to do with <laughs> gliding, bro. I just oh, no, no, you can't use it as a combat mechanic. No, dude, because it, it just makes no fucking sense. How yeah. in the fuck is gliding slower than running on the ground? <laughs> that makes no like Venti has said it for years. Wouldn't gliding be faster? No, 
It's really fucking not. Like, in what world can you glide off of a mountain slower than the... Let's, I'm going to Google this. I mean, there's a good chance that they release utility. So they have utility items that are like gadgets like the grappling hook. Maybe they'll release a utility that's like okay. increased glider speed. So we them. have the normal speed range for gliding is 48 to 106 miles per hour at an average air speed of 65.5 miles per hour. So let's look up average running speed of a human. Okay, the average <laughs> running speed is eight miles an hour, which means gliding oh, at minimum you're... is eight times faster. You're breaking our world immersion. Their technology <laughs> okay. hasn't gotten to that point in this universe. <laughs> oh, dude, it just kills They haven't figured out me. aerodynamics. Because I've gotten to the point now with the game where it's like, I'm not, why, why would I ever use the glider? I just fall to the ground as quickly as possible, and then I just sprint. I just, uh, dude, I don't fucking get it. I'll put it down as a five of nine. Clearly, I'm alone on the gliding. No, nah, brother, I'm with you on that. I just okay. think he made a fair point with the yeah. combat. That, that's all. I think he made a fair point there, but I wish that they could still make it go a little faster. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. If people were going to abuse the combat system, let them. I don't give a fuck, okay? <laughs> let them, bro. People have been dragon striking for years, and Genshin is one of those. All right, Rexman, <laughs> what is shit that you hate in this game, man? Or think need improvement? Um, I think the lock-on needs improvement in this game. So I, I just came out of a molding session earlier, and okay. it's always the, the lock-on that's mm -hmm. killing me. Okay, so I real was quick, fighting the... with lock on. Yeah. Real quick. Yep. I just I don't even I never use lock on because I never feel good when I use it. I'm uh, like, Man, this well, useless, you have to no, against not, not just the not just the hard lock, but even the soft lock. So the boss that I was fighting, that Tectone watched, that the one that keeps jumping around, the moment he jumps off screen, the the soft lock just takes its time to rotate to the boss and by then it's already too late. And <laughs> that sounds it, it's always it's always Damn. costed me my run because of that. Yeah. I don't know where it went, and I have to manually pan my camera <laughs> because of that. Damn, Damn. bro. Shit. Yeah, it, it's, it's really bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see... I, I mean, I agree 100%. I, I thought the lock-on system was so bad, I haven't even used it. Holy fuck, Pokey, chill, bro. Uh, <laughs> what's, something, what's something else, Rex? Uh, this is more of a personal pet peeve, but when it comes to story, especially side, uh, like sub side quests... Yeah. I really hate it when the side quest is centralized around a forgettable, faceless NPC that you will never see it again. Thank you! I've been saying but that shit for years. Holy fuck, it's but so bad. Yeah, it, but you, you'll spend like 30 to 45 minutes on the, the, the quest chain and to never see them again. And it's like, I'm really not invested in their problems and I really don't care what they have to say <laughs> to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think yeah. there's been some outliers, but the problem is the exceptions don't make the rule. Sure, there can be good NPC quests, but generally they're fucking forgettable. So uh, yeah, I agree 100% as well with that. I, I would prefer side yep. quests to not be focused around a bunch of NPCs when we already have like, what, 14, 15 main playable characters? Like, develop those characters, not these dumb fucks who need like their cat ran away and they, they're they going to freak out because their mom's coming home soon. And what if they get in trouble? It's just so stupid. Yeah, uh, we actually have an example for this. Uh, Ling Yang, the, the lion dance boy. Yeah, he has his personal story unlocked. So compared to GN's, GN's personal story was all about him. But for Ling Yang, it was 70% about two NPC siblings. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I didn't like that very much. Bro, I hated Dude. that story. Yeah, yeah. I, I was spamming. You know what I mean? I'm like, shut <laughs> up, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which quest was this in particular? Who is this? The, the cat boy? Ling Yang, the, the, the dry, lion dance dude. The furry, the furry. Okay, so real quick. Uh, how, do we, how do we feel about his new aesthetic versus his old aesthetic? I, don't uh, know I like it better. I really I like, like his one. new aesthetic. Yeah. You don't like the little cat boy? I'm, I'm not. I'm not crazy about a tier <laughs> one fur. Or I, I'm okay with tier one furries. T four and up furries <laughs> are like too much for me. Dude, I don't know, man. Like, I really enjoyed his old model where he was just a full blown fucking cat. Same thing with uh, what's his name, Morta or something. Yeah, Morty. you just really like cats, Techie. I do. I love cats. Yeah. I do love cats. I know. I, I know the fan base is pretty torn over this. Like, there's a sizable yeah. cam that likes like the older 
rendition and some people like the newer one. Yeah, I think they're I, both good, but I just I feel like yeah. changing full furries from being out of the game is going to remove like certain characters from coming to the game and I thought like a really big like giant alligator guy would be like really fucking cool like King K rule. Uh, that would be so sick, but uh, that's just a nitpick, man. I'm okay if the furries can't get their coom uh off uh to wedding, man. That's fine. <laughs> Number one, though, I didn't know there was tears to the furries. Like, I didn't know there's like, a yeah, yeah. You, ever, you ever read a book, Animorphs? It's like that. Yeah, we're like, oh, I see what you're saying. So tier I one see. is like, they're still like mostly human. Whoa. Tier two, still like, maybe they got ears. Okay, tier three, they got tail. Tier four is like, okay, now they're just fluffy. Yeah. And then what do you know so like, much right, about this an animal? <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It's very see, important yeah, to understand this in this player base. Yeah, for yeah, yeah, example, exactly. Sweetly is like a tier one furry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Am I tier one? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a tier one. one. Yeah. I could okay, add a tail. Yeah, tier one, tier two. Oh, yeah, tier two. Okay, tier two now. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. See, that's the, that's the thing, though. It's you took a good point. Ears. Oh, there bring we go. Bring it back. Bring now? it back. Bring it back. They're what? so cute. You look bald now somehow. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now you're human. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm not attracted to you. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> um, you, you touched on a good point, though. Like, giant alligator dude. Like, that big bear in Zenless Zone mm -hmm. Zero. I was like, this is just sick. Like yep. I, 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 I just like different stuff. And I've always said, I want like a big fat, like Gragas, like Scottish dude in my gotcha game. And he's just like slamming down with his big belly. And I understand some people like want all the characters to be sexy. And it's like, I, I just want like cool things. I want an alligator that like grabs you and throws you around and attacks. And is like a physical character. That's just so much cooler to me than, um, the same anime, hot models over and over again for me like it just I, I i want to see more of that like unique model unique character I but agree. never gonna happen yeah, i agree did you, did you see accessibly... how much furry porn there is for zenless on zero <laughs> no i don't look that stuff up oh. I, I i don't no, no, okay I don't so you're saying, okay you don't have to look it up it's just on Twitter, man. You don't get my. I get tagged and all of that shit, man. There's so I, much. I don't have the same following as I. I don't. I don't get that stuff. I get like hockey. Hey, yo, boys, tag him. Tag some furry porn on Twitter, so you no, understand. No, what's no, going no, on. no, what's going no, on, no, no, no. Oh fuck yeah, that shit's actually wild. I look it up. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah. Uh, yo, Rugsland. Uh, what else? That's all for me. Oh my God, that's it. That's it. Okay. Wait, okay, so, okay, are you happy with the main story quest? Uh, okay, for the main story quest, I think it's, they, they claim that they improved it. I can see it's an improvement from CBT1, but I still feel that it's just alright, it's just mid. But, Based. you also have to consider that they did this whole rewrite, this whole overhaul, in less than a year. So yeah. there's going to be traces of this. So I'm willing to give that a pass. And hopefully once they settle down, subsequent chapters would be written much better because that's exactly what happened with PGR as well. So I'm just on the hopium right now for the have, story. Have you completed all of the main story quests available in the first base version? Yes. Okay. Does it? Okay, I just want to ask, and I don't want any spoilers. Does it leave you on a cliffhanger or does it wrap things up? Uh, it's not. A, uh, it's on a cliffhanger. Good. It doesn't wrap up. Because, Good. Yeah. That's how it should be. If they want players to come back, it should be on a cliffhanger. Great. Um, I would like to talk about the main story question because we haven't. Nobody put that on pros whatsoever. Now I will be real. I was skipping through the entire story, but even me, Pokey, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> okay. Anyways, anyways, I was skipping through the entire main story, but even myself. I had to stop the moment Scar came on screen. I feel like Scar is an incredible character, as well as their sister. That uh, really got me engaged in the story, and I actually enjoyed what happened with the, star with the Scar story quite a bit. I think that they utilize that same energy throughout the entire story. It's kind of like a Kafka-esque uh, adjacent plot line. I feel like that could be very compelling for the story, but I am curious. Uh how many of you guys liked the story versus how many of you guys didn't like the story? And right now, we can just feel free to say whatever it is. I want to start off with Smack, but if you agree or disagree with whatever, just fucking jump in. I, I want to get like a full discussion on how do we feel about the story so far. Uh, so like, uh, I, I was somebody who actually, I shit you not, man, 75% of the story I kept up with. Like I did, I tried my hardest not to skip anything. Yeah. And the crazy thing is when the game first started, 
I, we, me and Jack were all into the story. We were learning about the world setting. We were learning about, I think, Luong is how they pronounce it. It's for dragons. Yeah. Uh, and there's like a dragon for each region and their gods, and they have their uh, their emanators who are called magistrates. Like, I was learning about all of this, and I was incredibly intrigued. And I was like, okay, this is cool. This shit going hard. I can keep up with the story. And yep. then out of the blue, they start going on these damn side tangents. They ain't got nothing to do with the story. And before I know it, I forget what I'm even, like, paying attention to. And I think that paired with the formula that I think appears be it appears to be the new trend of gotcha. Whereas gotcha, it's Genshin Impact's formula of you talk, I talk, I stun lock the person who's playing the game for, for the next 20 minutes, and then we move on. And it's like that shit happens. That's the nature of the gotcha storytelling formula, and I just can't do it. And to sum it up, to not talk it by his ears off, there needs to be more talking and walking unless talking and no walking. I think that's the biggest problem. I think yep. about Final Fantasy VII Remake and God of War. When you're going through the village with uh, Tifa and Cloud and they're talking to one another, it's beautiful and immersive because they're going through the village explaining the story to you while you're playing the game. Same thing with God of War when he's on the carriage telling the stories about Amir. They don't do that shit in Gotcha, bro. You're just sitting there listening to these two yap and you're stun locked. And I'm just like, dear God, bro, I can't, I can't handle this shit. It's yeah, basically, I, I show, it. don't tell. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I, I thought about it very hard. It's unrealistic to have a 30-minute conversation as often as you do in a gotcha game. You just don't do that shit. So that's why it weighs at your uh, your attention span. Go ahead, Imtash. You look like you want to say something. Yeah, and, and it's like after like the, the kind of big scar fight, it was like it, it, I, I couldn't believe it was like scene after scene after scene discussing. We're in this place. I was like, okay, now we're done. And then we're on a rooftop, and I was like, oh my god, it's still going. Like, I could not believe the duration. Like, that's the thing, is like, I like story, but sometimes my ADHD is just like, I need something different. And yeah. I, I really agree with that, like, walking and talking is like, is, is just, just giving some of that backstory, like, oh, that dilapidated town, be like, this used to be a thriving town, now this happened and just like tell it while we're walking by instead of a whole cut scene about it is and and kind of like the dark souls lore i remember i still remember in elden ring when you're approaching like the the kind of the big first castle you go to the shack and this person's like beware of the grafting like and then this other girl you run into and she's like i'm going to get grafted and you're like what is this grafting thing and then you fight fight this boss with all these arms and legs and you're like oh shit that's what it is that's the grafter yeah <laughs> and, and, like and it, it, it took like three sentences and i was like oh my god like this is a this is cool and yeah it's just too much specifics in every bit of the story mm -hmm. but i also think like with scar you know he talks about the black sheep and the and the and and the, the shepherd that comes to the that town and then and then his like demonic form was this black sheep and he's like okay you know what <laughs> Very interesting, like Fire I the, see the potential of the story, but I don't know currently if it's an amazing story. So oh, can I can I add one thing? Of, Absolutely. A funny thing about that that sequence where he gives you the exposition about the black sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually chose the option where I just wanted to fight him and not listen to his story, and they actually had that option yeah. available. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. it's really funny. I just did that too. I said, yeah. "Shut up." You yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight, right? fight I don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and you actually just miss out on the whole story that he has to tell you. <laughs> he right. had a hell of a presence, though. I will admit, with text credit up to him, yeah. he he brought me back in for sure. That cutscene of him showing yeah. up, him trying to talk. He he played a good antagonist for the story, and it brought me back in. But I think at the to sum it all up. They just go too far down the rabbit hole of explaining everything. I think some of that shit should be kept into lore and for story yeah. purposes. Yeah. You just you stick to the main spot point as much as possible. I think Honkai Star Road does a relatively good job at doing that. But that, that'll wrap up my uh, my tidbit. Yeah, I also just completely skipped what he was saying. And I just fought him. And I thought that well, option was fucking sick. Well, every game, every single game, it's like, here's your three characters. And they all have three different kits. And this is the enemy. And here's how you parry. And here's your dodge. And there's a dragon. And, and it's like, holy shit. I don't even know how to play the fucking game yet. <laughs> yeah. and, and, they, and they just they just throw the lore, throw the lore. And it's like, I don't even know if I like the game yet. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like stop, stop giving me four hours of lore back to back to back to back. It's like, I don't even know if it's fun. Like, let yeah. me play the game. Throw it in. Like, honestly, I feel like you should play the game for like, an hour before like any major major lore happens like you're like fighting some bosses you're exploring the world and then they start introducing it because they keep throwing like all these city names and the people who live in the cities and the main you know 
mayor of the city and then his wife's name. And it's like, I don't fucking, I don't even remember what the city's name is called now. So, yeah, I agree. Way too much fucking yapping. Too Did much. you guys ever play uh, <laughs> Undertale where the part where like I'm dying was about to explain the lore of why he have to kill you and then he stopped and be like, wait, why do I have to explain the lore to a fucking dying person? I don't give a shit and she's gonna fight you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, I love Undertale so much, but it's so fucking good. Uh, yo, Pokey, you got any cons for the game you want to talk about? Um, talking about a story or anything, about cons? anything, literally anything. Um, yeah, we can talk about a story. Uh, I think the story, have you guys seen the hidden sex story between uh, Ji Yan and MC? No, there's a hidden uh, sex story? The, what? Yeah, oh, I mean, they, they, they literally, like, they literally like banged and then like he, he, yeah, like you guys do see it. It's his companion quest, genuinely. Hey, Pokey, oh, I'm gonna let you finish. Just... I just want to get this out. I want to make sure this is so the fucking seed. clear. This the shit I'm doing talking about in the story is not just an exclusive Wuthering Ways problem, by the way, uh, viewers. I'm not just this is not just a Wuthering Ways problem. I've yeah. had this problem in pretty much every damn gotcha game. I just wanted to get that out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wait, so hold up, hold up. What what do you what do you mean? Oh, wait, Gian Seed? Yeah, yeah he gave seed, he gave her yeah. his seed. Oh he yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside. I remember that. Yeah, I remember the sex quest line. That's right. Even I was like, wait, are they fucking what is going on here? Okay. <laughs> Dude, the wording is like so specific. It's like it's important. It's yeah, important. Genuinely. Genuinely <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, having yeah. sex. Yeah. Respectfully. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Give me give me another comment. Well, we we've already got it. Story, you know, it needs work. Uh, you know, it's clearly better than CBT one. CBT one, I just skipped through all that and give a fuck. At least CBT two right. story now has moments where I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. I like the part where Gian talks to fish, very cute. Uh, what else? What's another con of Wuthering Ways for you? Um, I think the whole ecosystem it might lead to burning out faster than other games because, like, for example, like you mentioned, you farm you farm overworld in Star Wars yourself, right, for like two hours. Yeah. Um. I feel like that's more like a, like, it's nice to have. Like, you get credits, you get unit experience, and then it makes your life a little bit easier. But I feel like for, for Watering Waves, it's like, you, you feel more of a need to do it because it's tied to your relics. Right. So, like, people that don't want to do, like, this kind of, like, min picking activities, then I think it will be easier for them to burn out, and that might be a problem. So no, no, no. So, go ahead, okay, so there are tacit fields which are supposed to be like artifact or relic domains. It's just that the way they've designed them are not very good right now. It, they only have specific mobs in those tacit fields. And you you know, you know, don't really want those specific mobs for every build. It's or a every scam, set. man. Exactly. <laughs> right. So right. it's like, if I get why they added tacit fields. It's for whales or people who don't want to go and explore and kill every mob in the world. But like the way they've implemented it so far, it's not good enough. Like... Oh. Pretty much, the you're going to have to farm the world the way it's implemented, right? Yep, okay. yep, yep, pretty much. So, yep. so, so, Bob, you say it's not right. So, how yeah. do you think they could fix it? Um, let you choose which mobs appear in the tacit field. Like, give so right now, tacit fields are divided by set effects, right? So, if I go to this tacit field, it's for molten set and let's say like havoc set, right? From those. They have like two to three, I think three cost mobs and the rest are one cost mobs. Let me choose which three costs and one cost show up because like, let's say I'm farming for that specific one, right? I'm burning stamina here for this. Let me yeah. pick which ones show up. It should not be completely just set in stone. To, and honestly, the set in stone ones are fucking garbage for the most part. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah. Somebody in chat says like, like the ZZZ training area. Is that about right? Yeah, um, yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah, I was just about to, like, you of, could yeah. adopt, you could adopt a ZZ, and then you choose which mobs you want, and then you yeah. can like, kind of combine them. That would be really cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fuck yeah. Because I know a lot of y'all. I mean, that that makes sense. I agree. I mean, will players burn out? We'll say. Uh, the the problem is. Oh, I'm getting follow bottom. Hold up. Let me show you all this. What it looks like uh, for anybody who hasn't seen this before. This happens a lot. Yeah, I got that like last week. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate. Hey, boys, we're almost at one million Diverse followers. Name. So always appreciate <laughs> the old follow bots. Very fun to see this shit. What, what's his name? What's his name, Fob? What's the Timothy name? Randy. Timothy Randy. Really appreciate the follow raid, man. Really appreciate that <laughs> shit, bro. Appreciate you. That's big. All right, yo, Brax, I want to hear about the cons that you have uh, with the game. All right, all right. I got, a, I got a couple. I don't think anyone's talked about this yet. So the ecosystem, I really like the infinite farming thing. I'm an MMO player, and I feel like a lot of us are. Yes. And so like the idea of like just going out and just killing something over and over is great. But a big problem with it is that the substats themselves are still limited. 
Um, because you have to, like, in order to get the stuff to actually activate substats, you have to be spending basically your daily, like, daily stamina. And so because of that, it kind of makes the main stat farming almost feel, like, less relevant. Because you can farm the main stats all day, but ultimately, like, it's not fully, like, completed. It's not fully geared until you spend stamina on it. And it's still randomized substat rolls. So, like, yes, you can reset over and over, but... Yeah, it's it's kind of limited. So just to kind of what I want to talk about too. Just to kind of understand, what you're so you're saying you can farm a specific main stat that you want, or no? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can farm for the main stat all day. You can just kill the thing over and over and over. But the problem is that like you can get the right main stat, but then like what if you just roll like defense forever and all your stuff and then that. you're out of the Tech, and you're out of the stuff and you have to wait till tomorrow. Have I done that part? Yeah. Fuck no. The only, okay, so look, it, the only reason we're saying that is because, like, basically, Tech, the way it works is think of Honkai Star Rail. You get the main stat, but then to get each individual substat, you have to spend a resource that requires stamina. And then it unlocks one substat, and then it unlocks the next. And it's an RNG roll on what it's going to roll on. Yeah. And and also, uh, how, many, how, many, how many different possibilities can there be for the substat There's roll? That's a good question. 14. I don't know that. There's 14. Okay. 14. 14 or 14. Okay, of it's those about, 14... It's about as much as HSR. Of those 14, how many are useless? Like flat HP, flat defense, flat attack? There's... it's So there's things like basic attack damage, heavy attack damage, which will be useless on certain characters who don't want to fucking do a basic attacks or heavy attacks or just want to do skills. Yeah. There's skill damage bonuses, which there's characters that want to only do base attacks and stuff like that, so it's kind of useless there. There's flat stats, which are sure. Um, energy region, I think, can be useless depending on the character and what their, you know, like builds are and stuff like that. So yeah. there's like a bunch of just situational stats. And so it can be very useless. I, this is why I feel like there's been so much like fake news about this ecosystem going around. There's a lot of people yapping about, oh my God, you can farm unlimited artifacts for no stamina. No, bro. Like you can farm unlimited main stats as long as you have enough friends and worlds to join, I guess. Well, yeah. that's the still issue significant, is. significant though. That's still significant. You can't do you can't No, do, like, I don't think it's as significant as you think. Because here's the thing, right? In HSR or Genshin, if we get a piece, we know which subset before we decide like if you right now on hsr get a piece and fucking has hp defense defense are you hitting it no you're not you're just to tossing it into the bin right you're not hitting it. you're only hitting a piece when you see those good substats right right but true. in this game you, everything is blank it's a blank slate you just see a main stat and then you invest stamina that you farmed into it and guess what it just rolled HP defense events. You just spent all that. Now it, you can feed that echo into another, but you're losing about 30% efficiency. You know how you feed artifacts into another and any other game, you lose efficiency and EXP there. So you're like constantly losing EXP to do that. So it's like, sure, you get the main stat, right? But it's like every subset is a goddamn casino roll. So yeah. I, so I can understand that a hundred percent. That is useless. Yeah, hold on, hold on. How was that? You saying if I got five crit rate main stats that could potentially roll into God rolls, that's useless? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. So no, no, obviously in the said. early game, exactly obviously said. in the early game, that's good, <laughs> right? No, obviously in the early what, game. Don't walk it back. That's what. No, no, no. Yeah. Obviously in the early game, that. that's good, right? But right yeah. now in HSR, if you got a crit rate main stat, hmm. but the substats are fucking HP defense defense, are you gonna hit it's it? It's trash. It's trash. It's trash. Exactly. And I'm saying yeah. that's it's gonna that's the end game. That's the mid game but to end game of But you can't grind anymore waves. in HSR. You use stamina and you're done. On this, you can literally grind 18 crit rates main stats and then build on them over time. Like that's that's literally a yeah. I, I know that's that that's why it's like that's why I've, when I've discussed this, it's like a double edged sword. There are benefits right. to this system and there's benefits to Genshin's and HSR system. Whereas like sure, you know, I, okay, I haven't even gone to the layer of RNG. By the way. Wuthering mm -hmm. Waves' substats have massive, like, you know how, like, there's min rolls, mid rolls, and high rolls in HSR and Genshin? Yep. Yeah. This is, like, min, min roll, min, mid roll, mid roll, mid high roll. <laughs> like, it's there's way more, even, mm -hmm. like, roll RNG on top of that. Yeah. So it's, like, I think what it comes down to it, both HSR, Genshin, slash uh, Wuthering Waves, they about have the same amount of layer of RNG. So here's but, what like, I'm understanding. I, I, I think yeah. that there is obviously positive and negatives, like you mentioned, the double-edged sword. Um, I think it's yeah. good for players to have artifacts that they think they could roll by why, what Smack said, being able to farm the proper main stats. At least you'll think that you have a chance. Yes, they might be completely fucked up and feel horrible, like what Fob said. There is still at least a chance that you're able to have players feel excited for something to do, rather than the immediate feeling of you go in... 
You spend your 40, you get your two relics, the main stats are trash, and they're dead immediately. So there is the hopefulness that you will have something that you can roll, like going, God, just max it, but the, also the crushing reality of, okay, you farmed it, but they're still fucking dogs, so what the fuck's the matter? Uh, now, the yeah. mid-mid roll, mid-mid roll, mid-max roll, that's fucking insane. I have no idea what the fuck that even means. How, how big is the scale? Like, do you know? Oh, you there can get anywhere from rules. 7 crit damage all the yeah. way to 28. Wait, hold <laughs> up. Wait, 7 to 28? Yeah, that's that's what I've seen. I've also End seen like crit rate rolls anywhere from three to thirteen or something like that. And I've seen everything from three, five, seven, like ten, thirteen. Like yeah, yeah. What's up, yeah, Dash? I I've seen that too. But the other thing too is I think that they maybe even just have some like I don't know if it's like coding or localization issues. Like some people have these like crazy passives in their tree, and then some like three percent bonus it's, damage it's to the wrong issues. element. Right, yeah, but I'm just I, I wondering, like, is, is maybe some of that, like, with the artifacts? Because, like, how can you go from 7% crit rate to 28? Like, it's yeah. just such a, like, is, is it maybe, yeah. like, they're making an issue? Mm -hmm. If not, then that's just, like, stupid. Like, I mean, I did, <sighs> you, you could crit cap on, like, two items, essentially. Yeah, I right? mean, I'll, I'll be real, man. Like, I just feel like if you're using Echoes or Relics to begin with, I feel like you're just bad, right? Because, like, I feel like you should just be using level 1 weapons and then no gear. Because, I mean, it's a skill-based game, and if you need those stats, it's just because you're a bad player. Uh, that's just my opinion, me personally, <laughs> genuinely. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I feel like we've kind of... Here, 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 here's my question to, to you, Smack, and then here's my question to you, Fabian. Anybody yeah. else wants to weigh in, yeah. go for it. I, I was Do you think it's better... Do you think it's better or worse than Honkai Star Rails and Genshin's? Yeah, so for me, and then Fab, you can follow up if you want yeah. to, brother. I, I think getting five-star gear is grindable, even if it's just the main stat, is still a literal one-up. Objectively a one-up from what Honkai Star Rail does, where you just don't, you can't grind five-star gear at all. So it's like having that chance of getting it, if it, and to his, uh, his argument, it is an RNG fucking, you know, fuck fest. But it's still yeah. better than just not having anything at all. Because rolling crit rate main stat, crit damage main stat, you, it's it's massive. It's massive. The chance of getting good stats on that is huge. Yeah, okay. So I'll follow up on that and yeah. reiterate the way tacit fields work in this game. Sure. That's the only way anybody who doesn't have three, four hours a day to farm and every fucking echo. Because realistically, I'm going to be honest. I farm. So there's a wolf three cost right now that... I need to farm for molten and havoc damage, right? I need to farm this. This is gonna end like let's say, right? I need to farm this. I farm every single mob in my world, I get maybe two yeah. and like yeah. three. And that and out of those two or three, none of them have what I want. And then I have to go to friend's world. And then by by the end of this, I'm doing this for five hours. How many average people have the time for that? Oh, zero. The way Fucking exactly. Zero. And the way tacit fields yeah. are yeah. made right now nobody that is actually like doesn't have three plus hours a day to farm is going to have the amount of like main stat five star roles that you're saying right it's True. just too unfeasible True. right then and again, then i also have to say this china currently has a paid beta for this and yeah. if you don't know the, what that what that indicates is that this is the final beta of the game well it's yeah. closed beta right there could still be an open beta mm. No. no, so basically Chinese law is the final beta is the only beta that can be a paid beta. Okay. Oh, I yeah. didn't actually know that. So the next one has to be a release. Yeah, the next one is, the a, release. Yeah, next one is a release. Yes. So this is also the incentive to, to get on multiplayer, though, with the other two people and cut that three hours down to a one hour grind. But I mean, at um, the end of the day, it's all <laughs> up to interpretation to how much time each player has. Yeah, the exactly. The argument is still... It's a day-to-day, -day, it's an argument that can be made for any gotcha. It's still an RNG grind on a day-to-day -day basis. You brick up, start again tomorrow. Like you get, this argument can be made for pretty much any gotcha game in the in the genre. I I think for absolute no lives like some of us here, it is the system's amazing. We're we're just gonna grind nonstop endlessly. I think for casual players, this is like they're gonna they're gonna go next real quick. <laughs> That's fair. I think That's fair. People yeah. are missing a really important point. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Is, go for it. End game and event in this game actually give you item that help you level up your echoes or even like strip the tuner and stuff. It's like another way of getting them without spending a lot of time or stamina. Yeah. How, how does that? How uh, does that work? You burn them real quick though, ten ton. You do. You do, me. but but they do give them out, right? And in the the idea is in the future they will give you more and more and more. That, that's how the way you work in PGR as well. If Rex want to comment on. And then here's the like, other thing. A lot. I am curious. So in this game, do are we only gonna need to build one team? 
Or are we going to need to no. build multiple people? You need multiple. You need a lot of teams, I think. Okay, and why is that? Resistance, um, it? Bosses have resistance. So, like, so you know, you watch the Paro do that Heron. I can't because yeah. I focus so much gear on my dungeon, and that Heron has Havoc damage resistance. Um, so I need another character that can do that isn't Havoc damage, right? And then Abyss has multiple teams, and they have a system very similar to Pain Cage from PGR where you can't... So. They have two different sides, but it's not like the way Genshin does it. It's two complete different instances, but your character basically has a deployment cost. And every time you deploy them to set Abyss in that rotation, they lose deployment cost. So if you use them on one side, you can't use them on the other. So you okay. need another team. So, okay. So when you say you need another team, do you need a whole new team or is it like you need a new DPS or and then you need a whole new team. So you, you need to build a new support and a new healer. Yeah. Fuck yeah. For Abyss. For Abyss. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. We are grinding, oh, boys. That is going to be filthy. Okay. Uh, 10 10. So you were saying Regslent would know something about PGR and in terms of the tuner system. What, what was that shit about, Regslent? Uh, sorry, I need some context here. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the event in PGR gives you, uh, I don't remember what the, those called. Memories in, in PGR, right? So you can oh. farm. You can probably farm Echo and Event and uh, Endgame in this game. They'll probably give it out. Oh, so you mean you're talking about PGR where uh, the the gear, the the sub stats of the gear, which uh, you're allowed to pick the stats for yourself instead of RNG rolls? Is that what you're talking about? No, I think uh, he's saying PGR events have like uh, PGR has a lot of events where you can just buy like um, EXP, right? and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, your typical event shop with yeah. all the resources. But I don't know if those type of, like, they would do that same system within Wuthering Waves. That's true. I, I have no idea game. either. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, wait, Rex, are you worried about the Echo system whatsoever? Uh, no, to, to me, I, I don't care. I'm just going to grind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, okay. So let's, 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 you know, let's hold up. Let's see the bigger picture here for a second. I want you to think about the number one most important demographic, which is the casual players. Do you think the casual players are going to have an issue with the ecosystem? To me personally, no. If we're talking about casual player, I think the main stat, like maybe let's say God roll, God roll would be 100% good. I think people would settle for like 50%. So maybe like attack percentage, main stat, and maybe HP percentage as the second main stat and then in the sub stats you have like three out of five that are good i think people would settle for that because you just need agree. to uh, kill the boss that's all you know there's no unless there's a incentive like there's a content that really pushes you to min max then i think that would be a problem okay I think, I think that's very fair. I feel like a lot less people actually give a fuck about um, having perfect uh, relics than, you know, because they're not, they're generally not required for any content. And maybe it'll be different for testing, but uh, yeah. Okay, anybody else have any other points about ecosystem they want to brought up or felt like are not heard right now? Sweetly, what do you think about the ecosystem? I think the ecosystem, I do feel like it could be a problem for the casuals. I've been reading a lot of the CN community's response to this beta, and a yeah. lot of them have actually had very negative responses. They're saying the game is too grindy. No one's going to play. It's actually an over... It's like much more negative than the English community, I would say, or the global community. Really? And it, a lot of it, a lot yeah. of it is centered around the ecosystem. And I think that... I personally think it's okay. Given that they, li I, I do feel like limiting the substats is a good thing. Because then otherwise, if you let people farm the main stats infinitely, and then it automatically unlocks the substats, you can really go infinite. And then the game will have a big divide of the casual players, their relics versus the hardcore players. And that's not an issue in a single player game, but it is an issue when the devs create end game content. Are they going to make it super hard targeted at the hardcore players or are they going to make it super easy or in the middle where the hardcore players feel like it's not challenging enough because they farm so much echoes and they have the perfect substats. And then the, the casual players find it super difficult because they didn't have time to farm the echoes and get those perfect substats. Yeah, so I feel like limiting the substats but letting you farm the main stats could be a good balance where you can farm, but you're still limited by your stamina at the end of the day, because you have to use it to unlock your substats. Yeah, 
I think there is a way for hardcore to be balanced with casuals. I think World of Warcraft did that a uh, very good job for a specific expansion, which I think was Shadowlands, where they had mythic plus keys to where the max rewards you could get were out of, I think, plus 15, but keys could go up to plus 22, plus 23 infinitely for anybody who wants to challenge themselves. Uh, did you need to do that? Fuck no, but you could. Uh, I enjoyed that system quite a lot, but uh, I am curious. Uh, where, where would one go to cover... Uh, CN's outrage on Weathering Waves because I have not seen a single video of that on YouTube and I'm curious why the fuck nobody has made that yet. Is it, where, where, Pokey, where, where is your shit at, man? Like, why are you not covering Yo, that, Pokey? I'm keeping it but I'm just super fucking busy. No, you so haven't. I haven't been no, you haven't. It, no, you yeah. have not been busy. What are you doing? No, you have not. Corpa? Corpa? No, bro, bro. When you go live, pull up the fucking Chinese YouTube and react that's free <laughs> wuthering waves china community furious games canceled oh fucking that's like a hundred thousand new video man crazy you're no, like, like you're what right, the right. fuck are you what did you do today what did you do i would do it to, i i was picking mints in watering and trying <laughs> oh, to get a low base. 20. holy fucking base then <laughs> okay that's sick all right hell yeah okay uh does anybody else have any concerns on wuthering waves they feel have not been touched on because i mean I'll be real, this podcast, this discussion will, you know, make waves, right? So, like, we should get any any concern that we have out I, into the open. I want to talk to uh, uh, Brax. I'll let you go a little bit. Just let me ask him a question, brother. Yeah. I want to talk to Fob and Rexlin about what's the impact of going into those endgame fights with one character versus three characters in terms of a DPS loss? Oh, uh, significant. If you had to put a percentage on it. Well, to start off, when you have the intro skills ready, yeah. when you switch them in, they deal considerable amount of stagger damage, and that's uh, what you really want to capitalize on to get yeah. them immobilized. Okay, that's one. Yeah, that's massive. Some of some of the intro skills are crazy. Like, um, Bizo has like, what is it, fifteen percent just damage boost straight up mm -hmm. for like thirty plus seconds. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's huge. That's I, I'm I'm just curious yeah. because I I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to get a gauge on because I now I've just discovered recently that there's a time interval to when you can beat these bosses, so I'm trying to get a gauge on how much mid maxing do you do you really reasonably need to do speaking for a casual standpoint to to beat this boss? How much grind is required? How much like built a gear is required to just beat these bosses? You want me to be and, honest? I don't think casuals are gonna do it. Ah, yeah, I mean, that's Bro, fair. Fuck, like, 15% of the player base for Genshin do Abyss, so... <laughs> so here's I think it's hard, makes hard to quantify because you also have to factor in uh, how good they are at the game. So stats yeah. only make up a part of this. The other part is, like, their... How well they play. monster mechanics. Yeah. So, so More here's my question. Optimal combos. That I feel like is very important. So I hear a lot of casuals won't do this. That matters in one scenario. Is it content that they need to do? Is there content that casuals need to do that they're not going to be able to do or want to do? Boss Chinese uh, are locked in that shop. Okay, for the for this uh, the the difficult mode that you saw, the hologram mode. Yeah. So there is premium currency in the shop. I think it's one time. I don't know if it's one time, but there is. If casuals want to attempt it. I think the solution would be to come back when they're at like max level. I'm assuming it's level 90. They could just beat like the first three floors of it. They should be able to crush it with stats and then still get the the premium currency. So I don't think it should be a huge problem as far the as the only problem will goes. be if it's a refresh and like oh yeah, and if there's like way more oh, yeah. that get added. And then if boss shinies keep remaining as only within that shop, then it's like. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. do we yeah. know that boss shinies are like locked to the shop or like yeah, that's the thing we don't know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um the last Goodbye. Yeah, go ahead, Brax. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the, the last thing that I wanted to say is um I think someone came into my stream and said that Fob said this, so you can tell me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. um casuals need more shit to do in this game yeah, if they wanted so. to succeed. I think so. Um, I really like the focus on the hardcore player base. I think that's what this game is about. Yeah. It's fantastic. But if they want it to be like a massive success, they really need to like do more stuff with the open world and um, and just make more like casual accessible content for them to do. That's not going to be the end game stuff that they're not going to be able to complete. 
So you're saying there's not enough mini game? It's not enough. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> not enough mints in the I'm overworld. All right. right. Like, like, yeah. What, 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 it, what, like, I feel like I feel like that. they need to probably. So I'm one of the biggest things I feel like they can yeah. just honestly just fucking copy Genshin. Mm -hmm. a, a teapot system would not be that crazy, you know? Right. And like, mm -hmm. just have your echoes that you caught run around like pal world pals just like out in your base you know or maybe you can have like a little trophy system where you can show off your shinies inside of your teapot stuff like that you know and I, this is coming from me i fucking hate teapot i hate casual players like or, okay i don't hate casual players but like i'm not i hate it if it's it if it it like connected with a casual player as am i so i'm like you're saying this yeah. shit right now and I'm, it's just going over my head but i can't i hear it's valuable for a casual yeah like let's be honest like if Wuthering Ways really wants to explode and make tons of money, it's the money's in the casuals. It, they really are. I right? agree. Us hardcore players, we make yep. up like, if we're being generous, maybe 20%, but that's being generous, <laughs> you know? Yep. So, so what do you say about <clears throat> Elden Ring, though, and shit like that? Like, because they don't, they don't cater to a casual player. So, like, what's the, I, I'm here, I'm curious to hear everyone's perspective on this. Well, I you know, have to also understand that it's Elden Ring is like mainstream gaming, right? Yeah. This is gotcha. There are a lot of mainstream gamers that will never touch gotcha with a 20 foot pole. So, so like, so it's the like the argument is people will never come to gotcha. The gotcha is already a niche within gaming. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's, it's just like a different, it's a different like metric. You got to measure it by. Mm -hmm. right, let's take on that from everyone else. What's I'm curious the, to hear everyone's perspective on this. What's the casual alternative to Elden Ring? Fortnite. uh the casual alternative to elden ring like if you like if you had to say one right yeah is the mimic tears and rivers of blood and just kill everything so, <laughs> yeah that's fair. I feel like the reason i the reason i asked this is because right now there is a casual alternative to weathering waves right and if you want to play a game like elden ring um a game that like everyone was talking about it was all over the media and it's a mainstream game like bob is saying then you don't really have another choice. But like Genshin blew up because it was accessible to everyone during obviously COVID buff, right? Yeah. For, yeah. for uh, game dev and when that all, the hell happened. But um, I really feel like the biggest problem that Wuthering Waves is going to face is that like, yes, it's going to be good for the hardcore players and probably a lot of the hardcore Genshin players that wanted something more of the combat are going to go. But at the same time, it is going to be also the biggest limiting factor, I think, to its success. It, 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 I definitely agree if they keep the game as is for where it's at with like holograms and shit. Uh, but Elden Ring, I know people want to say it's this be all end all really hard game. It's really fucking not right. Yeah, it's, it's it's, not. I mean, like yeah. if you struggle with Elden Ring, you know what you do? You go grind, you level up. Okay, you get better stats, you choose a better weapon, you use a Mimic tier, you use fucking Rivers of Blood or fucking Moonlight Greatsword, you have fucking 20 pots that are all plus 11, and you fucking wear the heaviest armor in the game, nobody can do fucking anything to you. If you ever want to see an example of this, watch the way Asmongold plays Elden Ring, okay? It's yeah, not but, hard, okay? It's free. Yeah, but like yeah. everything you described, huh? a casual player would not know the, at all. Like if I, if I gave my girlfriend <laughs> Elden Ring, it's like, a casual, brother. get there, and she's going to be like, uh, she won't know you know it's like sure we gotta, you're dealing with the we gotta same put our tech you're, it's over your head yeah like, that shit does matter to a casual and that's why i brought it up mm. and that's why fob countered me with well that's the mainstream i'm trying to find a solution where i'm like well casual players don't matter in that game but then he hit me with mainstream so i'm like all right well fuck, i don't really know how to make that argument <laughs> sure i feel like as long as wuthering ways is accessible to both players the yeah. casual and hardcore players, it's fine. right? I feel like yeah. it should just be as simple as this. Okay, at difficulty four, you unlock all the rewards, but you can also do difficulty six, and you can get all the rewards faster, but it doesn't give you increased rewards. So you can do the fight casually three times or do the fight hard one time, and then bada bing, bada boom. You know, there's a bonus for both yeah. players, some bullshit like that. It, uh, it really is hard, like Rexland mm -hmm. said, to just quantify this shit. Because at the end of the day, bro, we're just shooting from the hip with what a casual player wants. But a casual player has such a fucking wide range of who a casual player really is. It's yeah. hard to make those calls, man, and know what every player wants. <clears throat> so I guess that's where feedback comes into play. Well, I think, I, I don't know if Sweetily's seen any feedback about this, but like one of my mm -hmm. biggest worries about Weathering Waves is, bro, this shit's hard to play on fucking PC sometimes. The vast majority of Asia plays their games on mobile. Who the yeah. how the hell are you doing these hologram bosses on your phone <laughs> on your train to work? Have you seen PGR players? <laughs> well, yeah, but like if PGR well, I played is a it lot on my less. phone today. It was it was not too bad. I played on my phone today. It was not too bad. Mobile yeah, but you're not doing. Did, you, did you do the hologram boss? Uh, nah, but it's like a it's like a it's like a boss fight. I did the I did the motorcycle guy. So it, 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 it wasn't too bad. Really, what yeah, were you yeah. saying over there? Huh? 
Oh, I think I haven't seen the general feedback, but I heard people who tried it on mobile saying that the general experience was better than what they expected oh, for the mobile oh, players. Okay. But also, it's Good. just one of those mobile players probably know the mobile player things. <laughs> Yeah, they probably know how to game, and they have a whole different set of system compared to I the PC gamers. I could not gamers. in a million years be caught dead playing that that type of game on a mobile device, bro. I just, bro, I, I have a hard enough time playing Honkai Star on mobile, bro. That's just turn based. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's turn based. Bro. <laughs> Straight up, I just can't. The only game I've ever enjoyed on mobile is T, uh, Team Fight Tactics. That's it, and I play yeah. that shit religiously. That game is so fucking good. Yeah. Holy fuck! That is something that I do hope they do because right now I feel like. The hardcore player base has been taken care of. I will actually, because this is going to what people are going to call me hypocritical for this. I will genuinely be excited if, like, the first 1.1 patch is a bunch of casual quality of life shit, yeah. right? And people are like, well, why don't you like it for Genshin? But you like it for Wuthering Waves, a hypocrite? It's like, no, motherfucker. It's because hardcore players were already taken care of, right? Yeah. So casuals, yeah. very fucking good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had an yep. idea for casual, I love to casual hear players and Wuthering Waves. I was thinking it would be fun to maybe have have a system put in the game where it's like let's say there's like an end game abyss content type of thing and then the number of clears that happen make can make the mode easier so then content creators are incentivized to clear and help the community by increasing the number of clears and then that overall decrease either decreases it like you can choose to decrease the difficulty or it gives rewards to mm -hmm. the rest of the server so it's kind of like incentivizing the players who grinded hard and then they can go and clear their content and then they can get their their fame their reward for it that, right? and then you can Bob, do not interrupt i'm listening <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that that could be one way to kind of bridge the gap and also make it feel like the casual players you don't need to farm all day to grind up to like the hardest difficulty clears. If you just want to get the rewards, you can wait a few days or wait however many days wait for the hardcore players to clear the hardest difficulty and then you can just go clear. Assuming you just play the game for other reasons, you don't care about the combat, you kind of just want to get your rewards. Have you ever considered uh, doing like uh, ASMR bedtime videos where it's like you like read bedtime stories? Jesus Christ. This guy. <laughs> oh, dead, I'm, I mean, I mean, dead ass, other, bro. bro. Like, I have a homie who makes bedtime stories. That shit is so nice. Bro, she's a gamer. Tech didn't listen to anything she was actually talking about. He was just no, I agree with voice. her, though. Oh, I think okay. some games do stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a very cool mechanic. Yeah, and I think it would be that. pretty cool to see it in here. Something that was coming to my head while you were bringing up that hunt, and I was I was just thinking like hardcore players don't like I me mean, I don't mind getting scuffed on what what a, a casual player gets rewarded for. Like I feel like most hardcore players will put up with whatever the hell they're doing with casuals, so because we're still getting our hardcore fucking shit, you know. So I feel like it's not a big deal to focus on the casual audience because at the end of the day, we're still gonna play the game regardless. I agree. What you yep. said. <laughs> what that motherfucker said, bro. Hold up. Yeah. I feel like yeah, we should just man. make the game really good and then get rid of all the bad stuff, to be honest. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> let's, just, let's just do that. Yeah, right. I think they should release yeah. skins, please. Like, good skins. Okay. Now, that's something oh. that I want to talk about, skins. Okay, so I had a chat war the other day. Obviously, I'm fucking around a little bit too much because uh, chat, uh, sweetly, in case you don't know, my, my chat adores you, sweetly. So thank you for being on the podcast, by the way. Uh, I want to <laughs> say this real you. quick. We had a conversation about skins being embedded into the game. I'm sure we can all here agree that the skins for uh, Genshin back at Honkai Star Rail fucking blow. Wait, has there yeah. been a skin for Honkai Star Rail? Right, HSR doesn't have yeah, skins. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that yeah. fucking blows. Okay, yeah. <laughs> fucking. I mean, they should have Bunny Suit Kafka already, bro. To be honest, Dead ass. and then get the way more security. That way, nothing bad happens. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so for for, for Wuthering Waves, uh, real quick, Regsley, you would know the most about this. Okay, I'm gonna need you to lock off from whatever Echo you're fighting right now. <laughs> okay, because I know you're probably in the game. <laughs> okay, it looks like you're trying to ha hack the government right now. Um, how how is the skin system in PGR? Oh, really good. Uh, have you seen any examples? Never or... once. Never. Bro, show him Blackrock. I Black Rock feel like it's better for me to show than to describe right, it. it to you. Let's see. So give me a moment. Give me a moment to turn on the. On the elevator. topic of skins, I think we should have more female characters. I agree. 100 percent I, I don't think anybody will go against that here. Yeah, like, I think that's fine. No, I will admit <laughs> it, it is weird. I thought yeah. I would be against it. It's a absolute meat fest in Wuthering Waves. Like absolute meat fest. <laughs> 
But like, bro, like, That's I'm sick. not, I'm not gay. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm gay, right? Yeah. But Scar is so fucking hot, right? Uh, he's got Shut that. He's got what that are you talking zipper, about? Bro. Uh, the the dick zipper is a little weird. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, easy ease of access, bro. He looks like uh, Topaz's brother, bro. Looks good as fuck. And then uh, there's said he had a sandwich pocket on his chest. Yeah, he's <laughs> sure, I don't know what the fuck that shit's about. Either, the little lunchbox. Yeah. But like, there's actually like manly men. Gian, Kakarot, yeah. Scar, bro. It feels so fucking good. Uh, I'm really hoping we get a five star variant of Big Titty Chick, whatever the fuck her name it's is. Is it true, oh, uh, PGR players, that uh, Kudo Games loves black-haired and white-haired uh, models more than any other color? White-haired, for sure. White There's so hair. many. White. White That's hair. my favorite. White. That's my favorite. So they, good. Also love, <laughs> they also love twin, <laughs> twin tails, twin tails hair. Oh, uh, twin tails Karenino. Okay. Yeah, it's everywhere. Because, like, in the beginning of the game, it's almost overbearing, the amount of brunettes. As you see, and then you see the white haired girls as well. I was like, that's a lot of black and white. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be cool if we get a little color up in there as well. But I mean, the game <laughs> just came out, so I don't know. All yeah, right. We'll uh, see. I, I have it on now if you can see. Right, I have it pulled up. Okay. That's the dude from Oshinoko. Oh, okay. Uh, this one. <laughs> so this Ooh. is. I'll Holy show you the base. fuck. What the fuck is this Acheron, is, this, this, bro? This is the base. They copy, did, hey, bro. Did they copy? Did fucking Hawkeye Star <laughs> copy that, bro? Whoa, whoa, that's leaks. We talk. <laughs> that's so crazy. what bro, they do with so their good. skins is like a complete overhaul. Like it's not just slapping outfits over an existing model. They yeah. actually change a lot about it. So let me show you another skin of hers. This is another skin. That looks so fucking good. So bro, they bro. they all have different idol animations. Um, okay, now, okay, out of curiosity, show me the most expensive and then the least expensive. Like, are is there any free play uh, skins in this game? I'll or are they show you the, this, uh, this, these are all paid because she's a really popular character. So sure. this is how, the latest one that we just got. How much? Um, let me just bro, convert that it. That's crazy. That's literally Akron, bro. It's like 24 <laughs> Fuck yeah. dollars. Okay, hell yeah. Easy. Okay. So these are the skins that... PGR usually get. I feel like Wuthering wouldn't. I, I, I'm not concerned whether Wuthering will have skins or not. They will most likely do it. They, wait, wait, they wait, know wait. that their models are good. Wait, scroll down, scroll down too, real quick. I want to see the men. Wait, no. Can you show Karenina idol skin real okay, quick? Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Fine. Uh, oh, there's 2B, two B? by the way. Yeah, they have actual. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Two, for, for 2B, I think they did justice to the models for the near yeah. automata series it's the best looking well, 3d see, render i've ever see her, seen let's see her ass can you show her ass or Look. no oh no no uh oh. not 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 in this view not in this the view. Skin, oh. skin. she looks good though that that excites me that they're doing collab yeah. that's really cool man. so their modeling is always on point yeah that looks really fucking good really 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 fucking good yeah mm. uh what else yeah, let, me, let me let me see let me see let me see a man a man Okay. Yeah. Wait. Like, wait. Uh, let me see. Uh, that dude. That dude. Go down. Go down. Go down. Down. That one. That that dude. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, he looked so good, he bro. Trip. Yeah. Does he have any skins? Uh, not yet. He's fairly new. Okay. Is there any? Is there any men that have a skin? Oh yeah, a couple. So okay. Lee. Lee, this guy. This is his base. Okay. Like a he has a there. summer skin. Let's see. Oh, so, your part, that's your part. That's that's cute. That guy is straight out of Fancy Star Alive. Yeah. Is there is there any uh is there any swimsuit skins that uh, any female characters have? Yeah, yeah oh. a couple. Okay. Um, let me see. The PGR fan base getting free content. Okay. Right now. So this oh. is Yo, who is that? Wait. This is Vera. She looks good. She's so it. hot. She looks really good. I yeah, lost. Good. This is her skin. But can you read Chinese? Damn, that's fire. Y yeah, because I'm Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> oh. oh my god. So okay, this is cool. her base. Oh! Whoa, dude! Wait, go oh, to the other one? The nun one? The nun one? Yeah, we need that. Yeah. The other... Bro, that looks oh, so yeah. fucking oh. sick. No, no, no. Her, yeah, summer, oh her summer Egyptian look better, I think. Yeah, this is her summer. Oh, oh that's clean. Yeah. Oh, you, you, gotta, you gotta wait for the animation. Okay. All right. He teases you. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. 
What's she gonna do? What the hell? bro? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, hold on. Yo, actually, this is how you spent two hundred grand, bro? Damn. Oh, no, I didn't <laughs> spend grand. I guess you know, bro. Like I. Okay. Bro, I love oh, the short sick. hair Vera. Oh, so hot. That. That's sick. How Wait, much so... do the skins cost now? Twenty-four dollars. Okay. Uh, who has the yes. biggest boobs in the skin? Uh, that would be Ayla. Oh, Hang on, let me. Cool and she guy. looks like Tauchi from uh, no, just... Wuthering Waves. <laughs> Holy Damn. fuck! Can you zoom in? <laughs> Bro, she got the Super Sonico vibes. Bro, God <laughs> damn, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Is that a skin or the base model? This is the That's skin. skin. That shit looks so fucking good. What's the base model for that? This is the base model. Holy shit. She's got to be OP, <laughs> right? <laughs> she's meta. Yeah, she's meta. She's oh part of the, my meta. God. Okay, I like that. That's very important to me. So okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's why for PGR, I mean, uh, Kuro, I don't think uh, they won't miss with their models. They they know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh she's cute as fuck. Right, show show, like show Darren. Darren. That's the main girl. That's the main girl. Hell yeah. Uh, main, Karenina. Okay, this one, she has a lot of skins. Oh. I'll show you the base. Oh! This bro, is her my base. favorite. Wait. Wait, this is your favorite, Fob? Wait. That's fucking... Yeah, Quintel, Karenina, bro. How in the fuck is this your favorite, bro? When there's that pink hair? No, 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 no. Hey, whoa. Okay. Uh, uh, Bob's is just fuck for this. I'm not going to lie. Wait, Bob, her... you're like a Rin stand, so this makes <laughs> yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm a Rin stand. This is the oh, just Lunar New Year. New Year. She has the same hairstyle. Okay. I think the uh, idol, I think the idol skin is back. the best. You know what the worst part for playing global PGR is? You see everything CN gets is like, oh, I got to wait a year for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this, this is the most premium one that we have. Oh, it looks, she looks so good. I love Wait, that. it froze, That's it froze, cute. it froze. Wait, what can I see? Wait, no, 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 no. I can't see it. Wait, yo, yo, fix it, fix it. Hold on, let me see. Hold on, I want to say what's working hold on. for me. Hold on, let me, yeah, let me, let me re pull it up. Let me re pull it up. Good, bro. Okay, okay, okay. This is actually so cute. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Reshow Techno, everything. Reshow. Oh, wait. Blocking his, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. bro, she looks so cute in that one, actually. That is adorable. Now, the real question is when the game comes out, are we all going to play multiplayer and farm together, bro? That's the real question. Um, I will admit, and I'm going to close the stream, uh, stream, Rexland, but thank you for showing us that shit. Sure, sure. All right. Um, I will say I do think that will be very good for the content creator space to have yeah. things to do with other players as long as it's optional, okay? Yeah. Because I, yeah. I know how important it is uh, for people to play games by themselves and not have to interact, even in MMOs. People will Absolutely. play MMOs and strictly play single player. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be nice because the gacha space has been very isolated, but I feel like there's more things that people can do together that are grouply beneficial. I think that'd be very good. For the game, yeah. how, how many do you guys actually care about co-op? I, I, I mean, I, do. I, I mean, if like that's what I asked it. Like, if you guys were down, I'd love to get off. Like, it doesn't even fucking have to be on. I don't give a damn about stream, bro. I'd offline grind, chill it, you know, in VC, you know, kick the shoot the shit. Hmm. <laughs> That'd be good, actually. Yo, when are we making a Nikkei guild then? Nikkei guild? I gotta. I still haven't <laughs> played that game, bro. <laughs> Dude, if the Apple Pro lets you like put Nikkei on your walls, bro, oh my god, I want that shit so bad. Holy Actual fuck. porn addiction, genuinely. I mean, okay, so you call it porn addiction, I call it taking matters into my own hands. Okay, I don't nah, need I anybody think, else to fucking do this. I don't think it's it's porn addiction. I think it's just we're just appreciating art. It's <laughs> yeah. a fine art, yeah. you know? Absolutely. True, 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 true. For sure. yeah, yeah. yeah, real people made those uh, made those characters. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh I love AI. All right, so is there any other cons that you guys want to talk about here or no? Any other cons? Uh, um I think Oh, oh, oh should we go ahead? You go. You go. Oh no, you, you guys can No, no, sweetie, no you're more ahead. important. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I think one one main thing overall is just like the general polish of the game. It feels like there are a lot of little things yep. here and there, and then they really add up. <laughs> like the uh, outside of the translation, which I guess they haven't finished localizing, some of the models have weird expressions, and then their shots kind of zooms out a bit weird. Yeah. Sometimes the sound cuts out a bit weird. Sometimes their model will glitch in weird ways. It's just like a lot of little things. But then they add up and then it feels like the, the polish of the game is not quite there. So hopefully they don't rush it too much for release. Kind of wish they take their time a little bit. Yeah. And fix that. Put in that last level. What do you think, Smack? 
Uh, I was just gonna say, bro, the translation is dog shit down bad horrendous for those skills and descriptions, bro. Like, is it, it really? It, oh my god, yeah, it's it, really it's like, bad. So, yep. it, perform three basic attacks is when you have when you reach level three of the basic attack. I it doesn't even say that. It just sounds horrible, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's down bad horrendous. I can't be the only one that noticed that, right? No. So the so the English translations are just absolutely all almost all of them are wrong so, so yeah. i swear there's an intern that just copy pasted three increased fusion damage by three percent and pasted it into every box that was empty it, it, that you'll find that <laughs> stat everywhere yeah i can't um, believe they mistranslated like yeah i found so many weapons that just don't do what they say because they just yeah. put in the wrong text in there it's just yeah and i'm what, trying to like the funny thing is every other language learn. And I'm just like, what the hell are yeah. they saying? What are they trying to tell me? <laughs> so San Juan's uh, sequence six node actually just says uh, Yang Yang's. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't, it, it's horrible, man. I should probably change my language then to Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the English is all misinformation. It's fake news. Yeah, a lot of the weapon <laughs> passives yeah. are actually straight up something else. Like, it'll be in yeah. English, when you enter the battlefield, gain three stacks. And then in Chinese, it's like, you have five stacks and then you lose them over time. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're, 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 oh, they could no. do com completely opposite things in English and the Chinese. That makes me wonder, I wonder if the game is not ready for global release. Is there any possibility, if you guys know that, they might release in China? They first? fucking better not. not. They yeah. fucking yeah. better yeah. not. I hope, yeah. I hope yeah. not. Oh. Well, I think it should be a more. simultaneous release. You think it should? Okay, yeah. I, I hope so. If it's if it's not it's simultaneous, nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna do post pro. It's dead. Yeah, they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I'm really hoping they can fix all these. Yeah, I mean, nuclear drama. Straight. Oh no, bro. I will. Oh my god. I'm not dealing with that bullshit again. Of the CN superiority community bullshit. I'm good, bro. I dealt with that shit through Ark Knights. I will never play another game that's not released at the same fucking time. Absolutely fucking not that they care about me. I mean, what? What? What am I? It just never feels good, man. It never feels good ever. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. All these Chinese games are always gonna be CN superiority, bro. No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. But I'm saying, like, when they also have, like, the, oh, and they're six oh, months yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, that, bro. Don't That's... even try that build. It's garbage. We've done it already. Yeah. No, nope, nope, nope. You gotta, yeah. you gotta run her this way. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, uh, they already have it all figured out. <laughs> I know. I was speaking, that's, why, that's why Blue Protocol is fucking dead. Okay, so I feel like we've gotten all cons out of the way. Final question. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, go ahead. Bob, all you. No, I still have some cons. Hey, get it. Okay, so I think the free-to-play experience might be... I don't know. So for as I can see, you, there's craftable four stars, right? Just like Genshin does. But honestly, I think they're all ass. Um, or at least a lot of them are just... Like all the weapons. Seems like the, weapons. On, the only crit weapons that are really accessible are all paid. There's not a single like crit weapon, and crit is like so. The uh, I guess it's very hard to uh, explain this for, uh, if you don't understand the ecosystem. Crit is a very fucking hard stat to get, and because of that, uh, unless you're running double boss echo, which doesn't limits you from getting to five set effects, you essentially you're gonna be fucked. You're always gonna be sitting at like thirty percent crit rate or less. Which is disgusting. Actually, so, I have a really fun. hot take about that. I think How, having well, lower crit rate is really cool. Because then well, a crit will actually feel like a crit. Go ahead, Smack. I, I'm sorry, I just gotta get this out. The you gotta understand though, the 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 dam or the like the slash per second in that game is way faster than any other game. So the lower crit rate in that game is actually pretty damn high. Like if you're hitting 18 times in like two, three seconds, a 30% crit chance is gonna proc maybe yeah, nine but it's, out of those it times. It still doesn't change the fact that higher crit rate is gonna exponentially increase your da damage, especially because this has 150 crit damage base. Sure. It I takes mean, that into like... consideration with regards to how long it takes to complete a boss fight is, is the point I'm trying to make. I, I suppose, yeah. What were you saying, Sweetly? But... I was gonna say, I feel like that might be how they sell the weapons. Because yeah, the weapons, yeah. there are a lot of weapons that have crit rate main stat, and maybe that's one of the traps potentially. Because the weapon banner feels like it's better than the other games. It's a hundred percent guaranteed on banner weapon, but when you don't have crit rate anywhere else, you gotta pull for that crit rate weapon to increase their damage. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Why I'm saying, it. yeah. The other a thing that I wanted, to... sorry, go back. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, bro. I've been, okay. I've been, I've been yapping. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. So. I feel like the crit rate, crit damage thing will be a concern 
if that is what it takes in order to complete the required content for the game. But if exactly you can what still, I was getting at. Yeah, but if you can beat it with suboptimal crit rate, then who cares? You know, I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. will it look as pretty as me having 100% crit rate, 30% crit damage? Nah, but if I only need like 40% crit rate and like 90% crit damage, eh, fuck it, is what it is, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I wanted to wonder is how have you guys, and there's a last thing before we get to the final question. Um, how have you guys felt about the generosity of earning the pullable currency? Uh, so the, 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 the primo gem equivalent in this game, how has it felt fair? Have you felt like you're getting rewarded enough? Because the other big thing to keep in mind is this is the new player experience. Like we are supposed to be getting pumped with a uh, reward after reward after reward. I'm assuming events will most likely happen upon actual release. We'll probably get more than what we're currently getting, but have you guys felt properly compensated for being able to pull as the free to play experience? I th I don't think it's like it's hard to fathom that right now because their yeah. release actual release is going to have events, pre-registration buffs and all that. Yeah. Um so it's a bit hard to grasp right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think it's totally fair. for me. I thought I think it's been trash for the limited wishes. I did like a 10 pool. <laughs> but it's like he made a fair point there. It's like you, you don't know what it's going to look like upon release. <laughs> Yeah. I kind of wish they gave us more pulls for the closed beta because you can barely yeah. pull the character you want yeah. and then you pull someone you don't want to use and then you don't want to level them up and then you can't get anyone else because they didn't give us any free pulls. I'm on the it advocacy of, I don't understand why they don't just give us everyone for free on the betas. Me personally. I just don't know. They want to see understand. pacing. They want to see pacing and progression. I guess that makes sense. That's a very good point. Now I get it. Hey, good shit, Fob. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, bro, you get it. Shit, I never even thought of that. Okay. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I've played too many CBTs. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I just like, fuck that shit, bro. That shit is so boring. All right, final question. And then, you know, we can fucking get the fuck on out of here. I'm going to hope no repeat answers. All right? What is something that you think Wuthering Waves needs to do that they're not currently doing in order to succeed upon Global's release? And we're going to start with Braxtophone. What do you think is something they need to do? <laughs> Uh, I think, like, if they really just... Okay, this is going to sound stupid as fuck. They just got to put more fucking chests in the overworld. That's okay. all they got to do. I swear to God, put more fucking chests in the overworld and people will be stuck there for hours, days, weeks just fucking farming that shit forever. That's all they need to fucking do. Okay. Um, and, and the reason I actually want to answer that first is because I do got to take off. But uh, I appreciate you guys having me. Hey, all good, man. I appreciate oh, being here, brother. Good one. Hey, Brax, take, take care, care, baby. All right, later, guys. Peace. All right, later. What a creepy fuck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love brags, love brags. All right, uh, all right. Next up, sweetly, what is something you think they need to do in order to uh, succeed upon global release? I feel like they should probably westernize some of the names. Honestly, how many of you can remember the character names? I think seventy percent of them are Romanized names from chi the Chinese. And it's really hard to pronounce, and it's hard to remember, and I feel like it can keep people from playing the game, or people from getting immersed into the game, where half the time they can't even remember who other people are talking about, when it's like, I got this from the banner. And then your first thought is, wait, who, who, who is that? That's is that like fair. this? That's really fair. <laughs> is that, is that... Yeah. I feel like they need to have, because I think in a lot of the other games, it's usually like a 70-30 like 30% of the names are Romanized here, it's like 70%. Yeah. So players immediately are thrown into this foreign environment and then it, it's, it makes it harder for them to get in. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like there's a chain Kakarot's name to like Jimmy John or like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> yeah, that would be sick, bro. No, I think his name is pretty pretty Hell easy to no. remember. It stands out from all the names that people can't pronounce. What, what, is, what is his actual name now, Marcello? Calcaro. Calcaro. What the fuck is that? Kakarot was so sick. Like uh, Kakarot was a DBZ reference. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Like, why did they not keep that? I mean, he's a Sephiroth reference. He's a JoJo's reference. He was a Dragon Ball Z reference, all in fucking one, bro. Man, oh, he's a JJK reference now too. He's got fucking Kenjaku from JJK's. Uh, oh, that's mark true. Huh? Head. <laughs> okay, shit, bro. All right, that's a very interesting take, Twitter. I would have never thought of that. That's actually fucking dope. Uh, Smack, what do you think? What do you think they need? To do? And you don't have to do one thing. You can do as many of the fuck as you want. I mean, I, I was just, I just wanted to say about one thing anyway, though. It's yeah. uh, the yeah. main protagonist is the only motherfucker in the game with a finisher. I feel like that's a missed opportunity for limited five star characters. If they were to give five star <laughs> characters when the boss is down, 
to do a finisher attack, it would incentivize people to pull on those five star characters so much more. They all have a unique exclusive finisher that's only for that limited banner character. Wait, I thought the finisher was only available in story mode. If, even if it is, I yeah. feel like that's yeah, a cool yeah. thing to finish yeah. off a boss. Like, I, th yeah. bro, that is incredible. Like, every limited character has a finisher. Holy yeah. shit, bro, that would be so cool. Yeah, I think it would be cool if every character had a special animation they did when the boss was knocked down, press F, do some fucking crazy mm -hmm. shit. That'd be cool. Yeah, I like this shit a lot. What about you, Pokey? They need mounts. That's it. I'll be happy. <laughs> They need to give me a horse, a bike, a car, like anything. Like I, I walk too bloody slow in this world. Or like some jetpack, like a freaking airplane that can like just fly over the place. Yeah, that's it. I think they need a, I think they need a motorcycle if they want to pop off on global it, Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. Some kind of mo. Chat yesterday said nobody ever once in their life as a gamer said, "Wow, I really wish I didn't have this fucking horse." <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait! You but, always want to mount, bro. Yeah. How many of you guys have played Pal World? All of us. Yeah. I'm assuming all of us. Okay. Did you guys get to Jet Dragon? Because yeah. I feel like as much as mounts are good, a creature like Jet Dragon is just too much. Oh, no. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I think there's a limit to how much, how fast yeah. a mount should be. I mean, be. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pessimist fucking bitter old WoW player, right? So, like, I thought <laughs> when they added flying mounts to World of Warcraft, I thought it ruined the fucking game. I, I, felt, yeah. I felt like it made the, the world feel so big. And the moment mm -hmm. you get to flying mounts, like, it's over like okay so you have a hundred percent mount speed or fucking 310 percent flying speed fuck yeah. that shit bro i like ground mounts yeah. but flying mounts they ruin the fucking game me personally yep yep all right regs what do you think this game needs to do in order to succeed now i will admit this you have already talked to the developers in person before you answer i would like to know how was that was that good oh yeah that was good uh they actually know what they're doing in a way yeah uh this game has been in development at the same time when PGR was released. Interesting. That is the fact that I know. Yeah. Okay. I did not uh, know, but that's cool as fuck. PGR yeah. was like 2016 or something. When, when did it release? No, uh, no. 2019, 20... yeah. was it? 2019. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the guy that was the, the lead developer guy, Dong, if you know, he was actually transferred from the PGR team <laughs> to head oh. Wuthering Waves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and for me personally, what I feel like they should do, or I hope that they would do, is sufficient marketing. Because if you don't know, PGR's global launch was a train wreck. Nobody did any marketing or sufficient marketing, and it just had a lukewarm launch, and it just yep. existed. And the only reason why it's known today was half of it was thanks to the players. Uh, it's gotten better now, but I feel that when a game is about to launch, the most crucial point is the marketing. Because if you miss that, uh, if the ship has sailed, your game would just exist and nobody would know about it. And every time when I you stream, they'll be asking, "What game is this?" You know, yep. that there's not enough awareness. So I hope that Wuthering Waves gives the amount of marketing it deserves. Uh, it's a really crucial step for when a game launches. Yeah, that's I how mean, I feel. I, I've been saying this for a very long time, probably well over a year. I frequently say that PGR is the best gotcha game that nobody fucking knows about. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the marketing team is horrendous, uh, and it's a shame because I mean, if if people don't get this by now, guys, you can advertise a shitty fucking product. And everyone will consume it and say it's amazing. Okay, if, if you disagree, then look at Prime, look at Feastables. Okay, you need to market the fuck out of these games. You need to be able to be paying for sponsorships uh, the entire time. And uh, yeah, marketing is very important. I feel like the number one thing that PGR needs to do uh, to succeed is to have COVID have a round two. And if they do that, <laughs> if they release another global pandemic, then the game's going to be a fucking hit, man. So let's go ahead and get on. Yeah, go ahead, Smack. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's because yeah. I've always been under the impression that a game such as this does have the community marketing it a mass. Like, case in point, Asmongold's going to play it on launch. You're going to play it on launch. A lot of people are going to be marketing the shit out of this game without them doing anything. Now, I do think, obviously, they should have a massive budget for marketing. I guess my question to you guys is, when you say it needs even more marketing, yes. are you are you speaking in terms of, like, 
uh, the like worldwide third world countries, like places where we're not playing the game. Because I'm like, I, and from my point, I feel like everybody in this space that's interested in the game knows about the game. So what do y'all mean by that? Enlighten me. I'm okay. I got you. Asking. I got you. Yeah. So <laughs> the amount of people who play the game versus the amount of people who play or watch people on Twitch play the game is mm -hmm. so fucking low. Uh, yeah. They need YouTube-based advertisements in the form of like pre-rolls, mid-rolls, many integrations on that, and also even more so, just generic, full 30-second YouTube ads that play at the beginning of anything involving gaming. I right? got you. So those specifically, because there are people who watch streams, but like, I would probably say there's probably like what one percent of people who yeah. watch streams watch YouTube most likely. Yeah. I'll actually pull that demographic. One time. That's what I mean personally. But I'm curious to know what you uh, you think, Rex. Uh, for me, basically, for your, to answer your question, yeah. it's just awareness. So, social media ads, mm -hmm. YouTube awareness. Uh, are you familiar with the game Reverse 1999? I think that's a good example of yeah. how much marketing they did. They really did so much marketing. Like, they really respect the importance of marketing. I think that's a good example of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And now that you are giving me a little bit more perspective, and now you're also giving me the perspective of how important it is to capture a casual because I think that's who you're going for. You're going for people who don't be in the space keeping up with all the soup. Like, so those are the casuals. Those are the soccer moms <laughs> who are yep. coming over to the game. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's why the casual is important because I feel like that audience is, that's a massive fucking audience, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just having a bit of a epiphany here. That's huge. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank you for answering. I just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is, it, it is a, a difficult situation to be in because people will say, well, why didn't you care about the casual audience and Genshin Impact? Is because that's the only one, right? There's, yeah. there's no other audience. Okay, the hardcore, they're just fucking coping. Okay, mm -hmm. there's, there's no reason to play that game at that level. There's just, it does fucking nothing, right? So it, it is very nice that Wuthering Waves has already paid respect to the hardcore player base. So now let's get some more casual consumerism going on uh, in, the, in the game. So that way the game could really be where uh, we all want it to be. Uh, before I wrap things up here, is there anything else you, any of y'all need to talk about? Anything you feel like you don't want to go left unsaid? Is there anything or are y'all chilling? No, nah, I still got shit I mauled about. Uh, let's go, Fob, let's hear it. All right, so yeah. I think these are my probably last three I'll mold about. So sure. Echo Inventory. This is a fucking complaint since CBT1. Okay. Um, currently, right now, there's a 2,000 Echo Inventory limit, right? You can't, you can't go higher than that, uh, which is fine. But the only way to delete Echoes right now is literally one by one pressing a confirm button That's after miserable. each. That's fucking That's miserable. That's disgusting. Yep. And people yep. have been complaining about this in CBT1. I don't know how they didn't make any changes to it. Also, like deleting Echoes give you literally nothing. I, I wish they'd give like maybe even just yeah. like a little currency, you know, something. Yeah. Absolutely. Going something out of your way to grind all these. Um, yep. And then after that, I will say character ascension. So like... This kind of ties into how I said free to plays might not feel so good with weapons av availability. Um, and that's even exacerbated by the fact that there's no character ascension stats. You know, in HSR or Genshin, if you ascend a character, they have like something that goes up, you know, like maybe crit, crit damage or something, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this game doesn't have anything like that. When you ascend a character, they're just getting higher HP. That, that's it. Damn, <laughs> I didn't notice and, that. That's I don't know that either. Yeah, that's that's really massive, I think, for balancing stats for your character builds. Um, and then probably the last thing is skill progression. At the moment, you get all the skills that you can unlock for your character pretty much at Ascension 3. There's six Ascension stages. That feels like your character doesn't have anything cool coming up for the next three Ascension stages, which is like, like if you look at, let's, I'm just going to keep using HSR and Genshin. Yep. Right, right you keep ascending them they have more things to unlock more nodes more traces right stuff like that yeah the final right now, trace when you max them out is huge yeah right now i have uh, besides like additional ranks of those skills i don't have any new like abilities to unlock no new passives nothing like that i'm done basically at this stage which is like kind of it, it kind of gives you nothing to look forward to for character builds yeah. beyond like yeah and they so. could give something they could give something major like a new ability or a new like yeah. a passive or they could do something minor that's still exciting which is like give them a slight appearance change like maybe one of their eyes glows yeah out once you max them out or some shit yeah i think that's very important that's a very good point yeah fuck yeah and no, i think those are my last ones i think they should have more shiny echoes 
feel like that would yes. be cool. And then like I everyone agree. could have one, even if it's like a different one. It's like I got a shiny of this, but someone else can be like, oh, I got a shiny of this thing. And then you can it would incentive be more co-op. Friends, it would probably bring in more casual players too, because then you can bring in the collectors. Who's just like, well, I'm not gonna play for the end game, but I want to capture these two, these cool shinies. Yeah. Or maybe adding co-op hard content could be fun too. Like right now, there's nothing. There's no challenges in co-op you can really do. Yeah, no, I think I think having more shinies because I think there's like what like six in the game right now. I feel like having a shiny variant for yeah. each creature would also just be really fucking simple. Just fuck with the color a little bit, you know. That's pretty <laughs> much it. Yeah, makes it much. exciting. Now I will say, is there a way to get a shiny guy, right? And then you use him, and then it's like bad, or like. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like, can is you? It God can, rules? Yes. Like, if if you if you get a shiny, is it mainly just going to be for trophy purposes, or do you think there's ever going to be a situation where, like, maybe you can transfer stats from one piece to a shiny stat? That way, you can use your shiny guy. Um, as far as right now, shinies just work like any other echo. You got an RNG. Yeah, just have to go. Fuck, yeah. bro. I don't give a fuck. If I get a shiny guy, I'm just using that one forever. Bro. I love that idea, though. They need to take it a step further and have an ultra shiny with perfect stats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, dude, that would be insane, bro. Fucking point zero zero one percent chance. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, boys. It's been fun. Uh, I think this is going to go ahead and wrap this up for the Gacha Cast. I think this is number 10. Uh, this was really fucking good. Uh, yeah. Regsland, Smack, Fob, Mr. Pokey, uh, Sweetly, Braxophone, 1010, and Mtash. I appreciate all y'all's time. Thank you for being here. Uh, guys, go check out all their channels. Go give them a follow. I've been seeing the support that y'all have been doing on some of their channels. And, uh, Chad, I really fucking appreciate that shit. So, uh, you know, thank you for giving me your time, guys. Uh, if you guys, right, ever Thanks wanna... for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks. I know you were super busy, so thank you guys for made time. And uh, if y'all ever want to come on again, if you want me to do anything, let me know. Hit me up. My DMs are always open for y'all. So, I uh, just know I really appreciate that shit. Bob, Rexlint, and Sweetly, pleasure meeting y'all. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice, meeting nice meeting you, buddy. Nice meeting you, everyone. <laughs> Yo, Rex, let's go. Let's go. Let's go for lunch one day. You're from Singapore. <laughs> yes, I am. Pokey. Wait, actually, Pokey, oh, that would yeah. be so cool. What the yeah, fuck? He's from Singapore as well, man. My chat told me that. Oh my god, it's crazy. Yeah. Pokey, oh, yeah. me and you need to do a fucking tier list for Honkai Star Rail together. It would be hilarious, oh, fuck. especially oh, when fuck, we come yeah. to, to the QQ Seal section. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> now, much love, brother, man. I love the fucking banter between us. But yeah, pleasure meeting you guys. Y'all take care. All right, peace, boys. Bye. 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 What? A good ass time. Boys, if you enjoyed episode 10 of the Gotcha Podcast, make sure to follow the stream. Make sure to subscribe to me on YouTube. Make sure to like the video when it goes live and uh, make sure to leave a comment. Uh, this was a genuine blast. Thank you all for supporting this. And boys, I will see you in the next Gotcha Podcast. Appreciate y'all. Bye-bye.